Uh, sure. call this meeting of the uh, work session of the Milton Planning Commission to order. It's Wednesday the 21st of, excuse me, Wednesday the 12th of October. And it's about 7.35. Um, let the record show that Chris Doty and Curtis are not here, but Curtis is on his way. There is uh, nobody here for public comment, so Robin, let's just get started. So is everybody in front, of, everybody in front of you should have, in front of you shall be two sets. The one, it's only one document, but it's very large and it's quite split. Um, so the first one is part one. And we'll just go through, through whenever, since you and Paul went through it, the same thing. Now, Robin, we, we got to page 42 last time, so does that mean that we're going to now go through the first part again? Right, because there's been a lot of changes. Right, well, that's fine. No, that's yeah. fine. I just, okay. Yeah, and then it should encompass all the changes for the last couple months. And we can make any changes then as we go through yeah. the, that part. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So the first change I see... Page three. Um, so under temporary sign means any sign of non permanent nature. Also, signs will be removed within three calendar days after the purpose of which the sign is intended has been accomplished. So we delete two applicants. Then the next page. Robin, stop there for a minute. <laughs> yes. Um, what about time before that purpose? How far in advance do we care? Don't we get into, Angela, don't we get into duration of signs later? Or maybe right, we need. Maybe just the definition, so um, each specific sign, if there is a time limit, is called out later. Well, then we ought to take three calendar that. days out of here. Well, I know we don't address the three calendar days there's, later. Yeah, there's no limit for the temporary, temporary signs, right. temporary information. Before, are you? Before, I think this came right from the original okay. when we first right I'm looking at created okay. the temporary signs. So, I mean, the only thing I know has limitations would be the political signs. Right? I don't think well, political that. signs, um, graduation banners. Oh, okay. um, those are those have limits after, right? Right. Those have the graduation political signs have a um, specific have, window. Right. There's no before or after. But aren't the, aren't the political signs only after limited after? Yeah, after the there's, there's a window before sixty days before I think, and have to be down seven or ten days after. Well, it starts um, at qualification, and I, I don't remember. But those are defined. Here. Those are defined yeah. back in the restrictions as opposed. I think to so. I will have to double check that, George. But I'm pretty sure yeah. that's what it does. Do you want to delete three calendar days? Because well, I don't want. I don't want to lose it. I just. I don't recall there being any point later that we. But don't don't, that. don't move it. I wasn't yes, asking to move. Is. I was raising a question about whether we wanted to have a restriction of how far in advance of whatever the purpose is a temporary sign can be put up. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I, I really understand the intent, though, if it says remove three calendar days after the purpose of which the sign is intended has been accomplished. So if, if the purpose hasn't been accomplished within three years, it can still go on and on and on and on. Yeah, I think the intent, originally when it was written, like if you have a, a for sale sign, I mean, when you close on the property, we hope that they're going to take down the sign within three days. So I think but there's just no way to really enforce that. I mean, well, but if you don't, purpose. we do address abandoned signs mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily, without something like that, whether it's appropriate here or not, give ourselves the authority to say that sign has not been tended to, even if it's not, you know, deteriorating, but 
Well, let's see. Here's an example. What if the um, what did I go past today? Some a church is having an Oktoberfest, and it's one of the upcoming weekends. So if that sign is up on November fifteenth, it is beyond its intended purpose. We would not necessarily. I don't think we address that anywhere else in the ordinance to be able to say it's beyond three days if we don't have it here. Now, here may not be the right place for it, so I don't recall being addressed anywhere else. So I guess that we need to decide that. Well, maybe we'll go through it and then... Yeah. If, it, if that's where it belongs, and that's I would say, belongs. then, for the moment, can we leave it yeah. here yeah, yeah, yeah. as, a, as a fallback? And if we don't find it later, we'll come back to this. Or if we do find it later, we'll come back to this. Okay. Okay. Um, the next definition, there was a change in the definition of The Which page are you on? The next page, page four. The top is before the top. Uh, window sign include decals and images painted onto the glass. So that was just part of the existing, added onto the existing window sign definition. I'm sure you guys talked about that a lot, correct? Mm -hmm. so any questions? I think this is the change. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me just change because it's. Remember, we were talking about the fact that it's a very complicated sentence, right? Because we're saying, notwithstanding, meaning that. If it's if it's not otherwise stated, right? Here's the exception. So the intention of this is to have it read or have it understood that signs that are not visible from the street but are still in a public area still have to comply with the ordinance. So if it's clear, great. If it's too hard to understand that, then we should try to maybe restructure that sentence. I think we kind of battled with that a little bit last time. We walked away from it with it saying this, but it's still pretty complicated. I'm going to add in all the possibilities. Well, no, I, I, I think it's okay. I didn't have a hard time with that. Yeah, but you're an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> you guys write stuff backwards language. and inside out all the time and get it. <laughs> I I get it, so I'm okay with it. But um, yeah, I, if a if a layman reads it, is a layman gonna? Is somebody who's just you know? Our, our, Ask Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I wasn't being it's got, well, it's got multi syllable words in it though. So <laughs> oh. just remember just remember who added that. <laughs> My twin brother. <laughs> yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger and David DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So everybody's okay with it. I'm okay with it as long as everybody walks away with that understanding that, that the the objective of that of sentence was to ensure that people understand, like we've encountered on larger developments, for example, where the intention was to not have a sign allowed interior to the property. It's not visible from the, from the main right of way. Is still prohibited. Is that everybody's takeaway? Okay. It may not be here, but I have comments from one of my neighbors. They have two small um, bands, very, very small, and they have, it's a decorating company, 
and they have on the back of their vehicle the advertising for that a phone number. So they came before the homeowners association and said they understood that they could not have those parked in their driveway with the signs visible. So they ask if it's okay to turn those around and have them parked backwards into the garage area. Would that be acceptable? And should I have be. no problem, uh, right? Yeah, that okay. should be, yeah. All and right. that's somebody I mean, who yeah. is intending to comply with yes. the spirit of this ordinance. Exactly, and, and to that point required. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Signs are prohibited in the city, and then we deleted whether or not they can be seen from the road. So, I think that's what I just want you. So, basically, we're saying now that it doesn't matter whether you can see it from the road or not, or the right way, or everything's going to be considered a sign, correct? Well, we're going to yeah. look at it, mm -hmm. which is a big change from but that cleans up some of the things that we had not contemplated when we adopted the original ordinance. This right. makes it more manageable by the code enforcement. It is consi I, it's consistent with, it was an oversight on our part when we originally did it. This, I, I, this have a, it I have a question about number eight. On the, we're, okay. on, we're on page 11, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm, I'm concerned about whether we're trying to prohibit all portable signs, or whether we're trying to prohibit only those portable signs that are defined in number eight. Because the way it's worded, it implies that we're prohibiting all portable signs. And we talked, I think, last time about, and I don't remember which place it was, but sandwich boards as an example. Mm -hmm. That would be prohibited by this anywhere. Well, although we we are actually in specific areas of the city writing, intending to write in for everybody's consideration the inclusion of sandwich boards. But this specifically says the following types are prohibited in the city. There's I no exclusions, exceptions, or anything else. I think that the portable sign was intended to mean that kind of sign which is drawn around town on a trailer or it can be, you know, purchased well, or rented point. temporarily. If, if, that's what it, if that's what it was intended to, then we ought to limit it to that. Because this says portable signs including. Mm -hmm. And portable signs is defined to be any sign which is not permanently affixed to the ground or to a structure. Mm -hmm. Good point. <coughs> yep. And we're going to add something simple like portable signs, except where specifically allowed. Or to or take out the words including signs. Just say portable signs attached to any parked vehicle or trailer. Right. And can I throw out something else? I went to a meeting last week in one of the other jurisdictions. They enforce the guys who are like walking around with signs. They that's how they enforce getting rid of them is calling them portable signs because he's moving around. The human sign guys? Oh yeah, guys? Oh, yeah. The, the, the that's there's coming two up. guys down on Windward Way yeah. on signs to get in. Well, I've got that on my list. Yeah, I, I, I keep I keep putting him in the back of my truck, but he keeps jumping out. That's <laughs> 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 funny. I mean, that means he's not very portable. <laughs> what, what about um, uh, Joe? You would know. I don't know if it's hands, but there's a restaurant right across from Old Blind Dog, and they keep a 50, truck or so. 50, yeah. no, it's a 1950 Chevy wagon. Right. It is can. Is it can? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we talked about signs on vehicles a long time ago, whether it be for sale or, or otherwise, but we, I know we talked about it as a form of advertising. Would that be a portable sign? Mm -hmm. Not according to this. Well, I don't know. It's a, if it's attached to any parked vehicle. Well, if it's if it's painted on the side of the vehicle, is it attached? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I. I think that was Angela. the intent. We didn't want, you know, cars to advertise and right. sit there. So. I think that's Wasn't there something? I'm remembering in a conversation that we had. I don't recall. It was specifically about cans, vehicle, but. Um, wasn't one, I mean, a vehicle that's intended for the use of the business can be there, parked on parked on their property. Now, they're using it, obviously, in, as a permanent sign fixture. That vehicle doesn't roll very often, if ever. It's a sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah but a Domino's delivery vehicle so parked behind it's okay. the, you know, what, or in front. waiting for the next delivery. Yeah, that's covered somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're allowed to stay for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. but, but I don't remember addressing that specifically. I don't think we talked about it. I think it's defined somewhere. It is. Yeah. Do you mind if I... No, no, no. It's just the parking there. These things are annoying. Yeah. 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 Other than to say that this, I think this is addressing well. Yeah, it's not addressing like the shrink shrink wrap vehicles or any of that new stuff they do. They do now. Well, I. You know, I think there's a couple different kinds of uh, scenarios that we we need to contemplate. I don't know that we do currently in the ordinance. I don't think. I don't. I don't think we address you know, shrink wrap or. We don't. That I remember. That I recall. Nor do we address the case of. Well, using cans as the example, where it's, it's a, you know, for all practical purposes, it's a it's a permanent and stationary sign. Well, unless you address it here. In the fact that that's a motorized, ve it's a vehicle. Well, I, I think it says that. And I think this is what it was meant in part to be, too, because it accepted mm -hmm. that signs posted in the window of a vehicle totaling one square foot shall be permitted, but not when parked within a road non residential. I think I remember talking about this originally. That's well, yeah. yeah, according to this, they're prohibited. Right. Period. Right. It's the way I understand it. But that, that yeah. one square foot, unless I'm misreading that, is limited to when it's a sign for the intent of sale. Right. Yeah, correct. And you can't go park it up on the street corner. It has to be right. done. There is something somewhere else where it says that the, you can't park it within 100 feet of the road. Correct. Okay. Yes. That must be in the overlay. Yeah, that big house in there somewhere. Yeah. It's in there. But part of the problem I have, I guess, with this, and this is just going to come up again, but part of the problem I have with this section is that it, it, it feels like in some cases we're trying to redefine signs. And, and to me, we should keep all the definitions to the front. Um, as an example, in, you know, for, for number seven, we don't need a heading roof signs. Roof signs is already defined, right? So following types of signs are prohibited. All we need to do is say roof signs mm -hmm. and signs. We don't need the, the heading because the heading implies that you're defining what roof signs are. Most of these that are listed here already define the definitions. Well, and, and it allows potential but, inconsistency. Correct. But the, I mean, the definition is not intended to be the administration of its use or, or, prohibit, or, being, or being prohibited, right? Well, let me so are we, trying, are we doing conflicting things if we try to merge that two things? No, but if, if the intent is to prohibit roof signs, mm -hmm. then that's all we need to do. Just say roof sign. Because right. it's okay. already defined as what roof signs are. But there's two different definitions. Oh, I, two, okay. So. I mean, they're saying two, um, they're similar, but they're not the same. So. You know, it, it, it kind of goes back to the portable <laughs> sign. Right? If, if we have a de definition of portable signs, if we want to exclude portable signs, that's all we need to say. If we only want to exclude a subset of that, then we need to carve out what it is. Well, our our two definitions do not exactly mirror one another. Right. I don't have a. I I, I see what you're trying to do, and it makes sense. But um, how do how do you want to manage that? Well, again, I think we got to kind of go one by one. I think if the intent with portable signs is that we're only talking about what's listed there, then I agree with Joe. We ought to take the word portable signs period out and just say portable signs attached to and just go from there. We're going to take out including, including signs. Just say portable signs attached to. Now, do you want me to clean up this section and get rid of all the definitions? Well, I, I don't think it's necessary, Angela. Just to me, it, it, we do run the risk, like Paul said. With, let's take roof signs as an example. Roof signs as defined means any sign erected and constructed wholly on or over the roof of a building or supported by the roof structure. What we've added here is it, it's 
roof signs and signs which extend vertically above any portion of a roof or parapet of the applicable wall. So in theory, we've added two that we've expanded. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That to me is okay if that's the intent. Well, I mean, one way to fix that is to add the expanded definition that's found on page 11 to the definition in, on page 3 and then just list on page 7 roof signs, period. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like what should, what's done here with audible signs, mm -hmm. right? Audible mm -hmm. signs is just there because right. it's already defined. Right. If all we're doing is eliminating what's already been defined, we don't need to repeat the definition. I'm completely after. okay with that. Yeah. So we can do that. Mm -hmm. Another suggestion would be um, under portable signs attached to any park or moving vehicle. Well, if you go back to you go back to page three and read, um, I'm working from two separate documents, so it's on yeah, it's page three. Part, okay. You read the portable sign, and we it, it does begin to address some of the things that we just questioned a minute ago about the fact that it includes signs mounted or painted on vehicles which are parked in such a manner as to serve right, the purpose right. of a sign. Right. That's not captured on page 11. Right. So we just got we need to capture capture yeah. more of that stuff in in page 3 and that makes page 11 cleaner. Yeah. Right. Can I go at the idea of trying to clean up the depth of, I mean you know, if you started your definitions and then just like, what, draw yeah. the sign, just have it as a list of, because I don't want to lose something. There's a reason why I put these things in there. Right. Yeah, let's see if I'll add all the extra stuff to the definitions, and then just, just mm -hmm. list. Okay, we can do that. <coughs> also, uh, George, on that page, signs in right away I continue to get questions relative to definition of how many feet is in public right away it depends on the street and it mm -hmm. and yeah it's now does street. anywhere I mean should we I guess define or is it a, a way we can define this I mean that's it's I mean it's coming up you know they'll say well so-and-so's got a sign and he's right in the public right away well I don't know if he is or not, because I don't know what the public right-of-way is. On Windward Parkway, for instance, what's the public right-of-way on Windward Parkway? Probably 60 <laughs> feet from the center line would be my guess. Tell what my problem, yeah, probably, but that's yeah. what brought the, because this particular same guy that brought up these other problems yeah. said uh, um, that they have had uh, three, or, there are three or four signs uh, located on Windward Parkway, um, mm -hmm. that the signs, yeah, according the sushi, to him, sushi guy, the battery guy, yeah, mm -hmm. who's a retired DOT executive, made that clear. Which side of Windward are they on? Milton side. North side. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Who says that the signs on Windward slash Milton side are in the right of way and are not legal? You want me to throw in another snafu? We don't own any of the right of way along Windward. It belongs to Alpharetta, but it doesn't matter. We can still enforce that. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, but, <laughs> yeah. but my point being, how do we, no, know. you know, how you answer that right question? Right. How do, how do you, you determine? Are you, are, are you can you because you know which street or has the right of way. The, the, the right of the right of way is within the city of Milton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not talking about ownership. <laughs> right, the right of way, the right of way on the on the north side of Windward is in the city of Alpharetta because this, the city limits defined as the center line of that road. Well, that makes sure Milton. They, but they're, they're in control of the right of way. The Only, city limits are like not on the north side. The no. North side of Windward. Yes, we we can look, but I don't think that's true. No, I agree with you, George. I mean, and, and as a matter of fact, I, I know for a fact if we talk about Cogburn Road and, and North Park, mm -hmm. we control that right away on the on the Alpharetta side of that. Well, so those, that some of those signs can go away? We specifically wrote the, bad, the defined physical limits of the city to start at the beginning of the right of way on that side of the road. Well, I know on the proper part of Windward, <laughs> It's not our right of way like all the other roads are. Okay. I don't know why it's that way, but it is. Okay. But we actually so, address 
that later on. It's something that should make it better, a little easier to deal with. To define? Yeah. Well, not to define it. We we For changed signs. where the signs are allowed to go. Like you said, nobody knows where the right of way is. So. Unless you have a, a survey done, you know right. exactly where the right of way is. But you're not going to do that. You know. Well, that would be a good answer for me to tell him is that DOT doesn't even know. Okay. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> we're going to address how to deal with it. Okay. The, All right. Papers. Don't forget that. Um, we get an I, to him. Sorry. sorry. Before we go on, um, just going back to the very beginning, let me, let me just say, when, um, when Angela and I and Ron worked on this, it was our intention to address a lot of the things that we heard at the meeting last time. So some of the things that we're catching tonight, we did not go back and sure, look at. Sure. So we appreciate you guys helping with that. And the catch that I just found, and maybe it's maybe it's addressed the other way, um, Angela, where we, where we get to in a minute, is if under 64-2295 of the heading says prohibited signs and devices, and says the following signs, the following types of signs are prohibited in the city, and then we list, when you get to number two, we do allow sandwich board, or we're suggesting that we consider allowing sandwich boards in some parts of the city. I just so do we still leave it there, or does that go no, away? I, need to, I just missed that there. We, we, you, we either need to take it out here, or else we need to say in the preamble, unless allowed elsewhere. Well, that's where I was going to go, ordinance. is maybe to, to make it simpler, you can say a lot other, unless otherwise specifically allowed in. I, I think that complicates it. Yeah, really? I just take it out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. Well, again, think it's a lot cleaner to say these things are prohibited. Period. End of sentence. Okay. As long as we understand that, right now, the things that we're offering up are suggestions that need to be sure. adopted. Well, that's why I asked about portable signs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that, to me, a sandwich board is a portable sign. Correct. And we, we're not saying portable signs are not allowed. It's just a specific subset of portable okay. signs. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, Paul, I had a similar question about 18 that got added. This would say that signs attached to fences or walls are not allowed, period. Yes, period. That's that's the correct interpretation of that. Okay. Is there any grandfather? Because we're trying to. So the target sign is not allowed. I don't recall a target sign being affixed to the fence. It's affixed to a wall. It's fixed to the wall of the building. Ah. <laughs> that was not that was not the I, I understand. Yeah. So the, we mean like a freestanding well, wall? Subdivision well, walls. Like subdivision entrance walls. Okay. We, so we, need, we need to we need to clarify yeah. that. Because as it relates to fence, then does anyone who now has those, are they grandfathered? If we add this? We're just having problems with temporary signs going on the four board fences. Well, that's there. what they are. Go down Hopewell Road. I can count six within a mile of my house on the left hand side of the road. Right. Stalls available, rider, um, mm -hmm. whatever. Pain meds on demand. Pain yeah. 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 And, and that, the intent is for that kind of stuff to go. I agree. But yeah, the only thing that we had contemplated. Not contemplated. The only thing that we we are suggesting would be allowed is the actual sign construction company. So, or not sign fence construction company. So, if it's true, you know, True Oak mm -hmm. Construction that built that sign, they get to have their logo on their right. on their sign. Okay. But, but so the intent of this was to to as four board fences are sort of intended to be a. Um, a statement about you're in Milton. The objective was to clean up our fences and have them be a part of the ambiance of the city. So, mm -hmm. so let, 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 let me let me go back to page. Don't don't go back. But on page four, it says the purpose of this article is to ensure the fair and consistent enforcement of sign standards. Does allowing the sign the fence company to have a sign and nobody else to have a sign fair and consistent? Well, it's like saying you have to take the Chevy off of your. Automobile. No, because Not every really. other car can put whatever they want on their automobile. Okay. <laughs> and I'm okay with it coming off. <laughs> I mean, I mean, unless you, you, uh, I mean, unless you, um, you uh, put a toggle on it, you know, talk about a dimension. I mean, if you said, then you open, then you open up a huge can of worms. My, yeah. my concern. I was. I only 
being facetious yeah. a little bit, we're, we're, we run the risk, I think, of, of getting into content specific if yeah. we're saying the guy that yeah. built the fence can advertise. Right. Well, then maybe we, going back to the point we're making before, um, I mean, we need to fix whatever that was, George. We need to fix uh, 18. But I think that, again, as a layman reading this, I would suggest that we add up in the front in the preamble of this that unless otherwise specifically allowed. I think we can just add tempor temporary signs and banners, and that'll. I mean, that's what that's what they were putting up, especially the banners. You're talking, about, else, I mean, you're talking about you're talking about an 18 or are you talking or 18, about yes because mm -hmm. anything else that has a permit to it even I mean there's signs on the walls for subdivisions but those are permitted signs there's certain things that are are on the walls like wall signs or you know subdivision signs on the walls right those mm -hmm. are I, have, I have no problem with striking walls well, or you can no, leave no, or you can leave walls temporary, temporary. Yeah, temporary signs but, and banners. So again, if, if back to playing devil's advocate, if, if, if a, a graduation sign that's hung on the entrance to a subdivision wall would not be allowed based on that. Correct, because they're intended to be freestanding and, you know, erected on a... So the, so the subdivision on one side of the street that has a freestanding sign is okay. The one on the other side that has the exact same size sign, but they decided to hang it on their wall is not okay. Correct. I don't agree with that. I have a problem with that. I mean, I don't like either one. Well, I, you know, again, I have, I'm only in offering an interpretation of what you just posed to me. We hadn't, no, no. We hadn't thought about no. that in. I'm in just saying, I don't, I, that to me is not consistent. Great. Well, it, when we it, get to graduation it, signs, yeah, can well, we address graduation yeah. signs? But um, Well, we can, but, but I mean, th again, this goes back to this is saying these are prohibited, period. Right. And I'm, I'm okay with them being prohibited. Is, is is the bottom line for me on that? The, I mean, these, signs of any kind. Of fixed these are any it. signs, right? So it doesn't mean it doesn't say temporary or permanent. It's any sign attached to a fence or a wall. Period. So banners hung on fences are not allowed. Right. That was. Well, that was the main. That was our. That was kind of. That was our frame of mind when we wrote that. It was intended to be as, as black and white as we could make that, that we want to clean up our fences and our walls. There are specific walls that are allowed and are defined as such when you're building a building or and, and, whatever. And but I'm not, I'm not trying to put a value on that, but if, if the same guy puts a freestanding sign right in front of his fence with the same sign that he was going to hang on his fence, it's allowed. Is that mm -hmm. right? That doesn't feel right. Well, because I, I mean, if the objection is the sign, do I really care if he hangs on the fence or if he puts it on a freestand right in front of there? If the sign's exactly the same size and exactly the same location, you're talking maybe that much difference between. Well, the the, the only difference that I can see, and I, and I'm not sure that it matters, but um, and I'm also not sure if it's what you had in mind, but uh, uh, on the on the. Temporary banner signs, it, it said uh, PVC frame or something mm -hmm, like does. that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, was required, does. and it said some things that weren't allowed. And so there's more structure and presentation uh, control, I guess, on a freestanding. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's been a fitness boot camp sign. You've seen it, you know, uh, on a fence across from where I am for six months. And it mm -hmm. looks, I mean, I'm, go get in shape. You know, I don't, I don't care, but I mean, it looks kind of crummy, you know, it's kind of hanging down mm -hmm. in the middle, and sure. every once in a while they'll tighten it back up again, but it just looks tacky. Um, and that's exactly and that's what I thought what we're trying to get rid of. To yeah, but I mean, based on what, what Curtis just said, that sign would look better on the fence because it wouldn't sag. Well, but it would <laughs> No, it's on the fence. But in that case, where it's tied a onto the fence, and it just gets this big bow in it, and it doesn't really bother me to... You but know, if that were a banner, look. it would now be required that it be on a fixed structure. It is a banner. And so it, it couldn't banner. be dangled, I mean, you know, as it is where it's going to be. What's that? <laughs> it sounds like it's illegal if it's been up for six months. I think that, and I might, it might be four months, well, but, but it also no, might no, be eight. No, because so. it, it says it can be there <coughs> until three, three days after, and Curtis isn't in shape yet. Yep. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Fat chance. <laughs> 
Well, let me go back to my original mm -hmm. question relative to the signs that are attached to the fence, advertising such things as writing, and I agree, George, with you. All they'd have to do, because they're about the size of a, a political sign. So what you're saying is that if they take it off the fence, they would be allowed then to go a foot from the fence and put that up on a post. They're allowed two or three mm -hmm. freestanding residents allowed three. Well, AG one. AG one. Well, no residents. Actually, you're right. What what, what about cases? And, and I'm not trying to overcomplicate this, but I, I know that it's come up recently with political signs where the fencing is close enough to the road uh, to disallow any freestanding signage between the fence and the road. Because I mean, the right away. What, because the right away. Yeah, that's that was my point earlier about. I, mi I, mm -hmm. I miss. You're right on. No, you're. Yeah, and then it's. But how like does anybody fence know? Is the only option. How does anyone know? That, exactly. That, that's, that's right. The, that's well, a problem. The fence isn't an option too either. If the fence is in the right of way. I think that's. I think that's right. But that's that's all I could come mm. up with. I'm doing some renovations at my house, and the the builder put his little sign up right out there in front of my fence, and you know it was gone Mark's the next okay. day. No. <laughs> so I had a feeling it was you, Mark. <laughs> Kidding, but uh, the, anyway, I, and it couldn't have been, it couldn't have been any further away from the from the road. I mean, it was right up against the fence, and uh, he so that that's into the fence. That puzzled me. Well, mm -hmm. that that's what I told him. <laughs> exactly. I said, get a batter. You know? <laughs> You're doing a fine job. Get a batter. But <laughs> my question is two part. There is if. If that we allow it on the fence, which now that George brought that up, it didn't, you know, it doesn't really matter, um, is that if we disallowed it, how do we then, do we, and we sign this or the council approves it, are those people grandfathered? No. They're not. The, the, signs, the banners you're talking about weren't permitted in the first place. No, the, these little signs oh. on a fence. On the fence? Mm -hmm. About the political signs? No. Yeah, just Saying like, writing, free lessons, uh, stalls available for rent, uh, horses to ride. Until he changes the sign, it would be allowed. I mean, grandfather in, right? Typically, what we do. And I'm, I'm saying that only for your benefit because I don't know how in the world, after two sessions here that we've talked about, that we can in any way figure out what was grandfathered and what wasn't. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how in the world you could, you know. Well, you could, we could say as a city, there's uh, X window of grace period, and we define what that is. No, you can't do that. You, you dare get away with it. If, if you're talking, to Mark's point, if you're talking about signs that are that require permits under the existing, then you could do That's that. Fine. But if they don't right. require a permit now, right? and they're up there, you can't come in afterward and say, you have to take those signs down because we changed the law. I can't, why can't you give them a grace period and say after a period of Because they're six, already there legally. Months. Well. <laughs> you, now, you, unless they change it out and somebody watches them change it out, you could mm -hmm. Oh, if they change it out, I agree. Yeah. But as long as they leave what's there, and it's, mm -hmm. it's legal now. And if it's if that's a legal challenge, then I would have to say we'd have to comply with that. If there's a way with imposing a I mean, grace they, period like and getting away with if that. If they're banners and stuff, which is what you yeah. do, that, that don't have permits, then right. by all means. Yeah. Purpose. Yeah. Well, I mean, couldn't you purposely change them? Yeah. Well, the, the, the signs. The city? And it wouldn't be a taking. You just purchase the value of the sign. It's a buck and a half for that sign. You probably could, but you're, you know, if the purpose of the sign is to advertise something, you're eliminating their ability to do that. And well, not if they then comply with the new code. Which is no sign. Well, no, it would be a temporary three, two, I mean, the, the temporary signage mm -hmm. off of a fence. Right. Right. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves by worrying about enforcement. We're not sure what we're going to enforce yet. Yeah. True. Well, no, but it was just the point. And the only, what got me on that is uh, one of the liquor stores, which was operating prior to the city of Milton, has 10, 12 beer signs, all lit, 
you know, well done, but he's grandfather. You talking about Eddie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you so, guys know the proprietor of the <laughs> Absolutely. On a first name basis. Absolutely. You don't know Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> you know Eddie, you're missing out. He said that. I did. But I anyhow, you, and, right. you know, and, and and that brought it on to say, well, now, how in the world when when our enforcement officers are going around trying to decide, okay. Are those neon? Was that? Yes. 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 Well, but in, the, in Fulton County, neon wasn't allowed. That's what Deidre said. Oh, well, come on. Now, that liquor store's been there. I'm not that. I'm just yeah, well, that wasn't allowed. Allowed. it wasn't well. Yeah. It wasn't certainly enforced. Yeah, yeah, enforced. And I'm not I wanting to take Eddie on. <laughs> <laughs> right across the street from uh, Pretty Creek. Yeah. But I'm saying if you're better, I mean, it's on the line. Yeah, our side, but you're yeah. right. right. Don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Hey, I know that's my neighbor. <laughs> see, see, we like him. We don't have to enforce for him. People in that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm okay. So what are we going to do about this? Yeah. Uh, number eighteen. Well, and you guys heard basically what our frame of mind was when we wrote well, that. I totally understand. I can't disagree. We don't want stuff yeah. on the sign, on the fences, or the the walls. If we go back to the original frame of mind when we wrote that. It was intended to have a sense of place for Milton. And in keeping in mind the four board fences, which are kind of a statement of Milton, it was intended to clean up the four board fences anywhere in the city and have it be part of our ambiance. So if you had that frame of mind, help me under help me write that so we can I I'm okay with the intent. All I'm trying to point out, at least for me, is that I don't think the intent is accomplished solely by saying that you can't attach it to the fence or the wall, because whether it's on the fence or whether it's right in front of the fence so I can't see the fence anyway, it, it has the same effect. Mm -hmm. And we're saying if it's on, you know, whether it's PVC or whatever it is, if it's on its own support structure but it's right in front of the fence, that's okay, but if it's on the fence, it's not. And I think we're not even saying that either, because Mark has made a point that a lot of these fences are in the middle of a landscape strip, and you're not supposed to put signs in a landscape strip, even if it's behind the right-of-way. So there's all these multiple layer of issues with yeah. these signs. Well, as long as we eliminate all those layers, I'm okay. But that's that's all I'm saying is, to me, is if we're trying to protect the aesthetic of the fence, right. Just saying you can't put it on the fence doesn't accomplish right, that. Right, but then you have the next step. So even if, let's say, if somebody put a banner in front of the, the fences at Sembler, at Target, that still could be in the landscape strip. So they still couldn't put it in front of the That's fence. That's correct. That's why we... But, and in the case of Sembler, because we'd spent a lot of time talking about those guys, you know that is that's a part of a statement of when you're entering Milton. That is a you know marquee area of having arrived in Milton. So the intention was to have that be very clean. So to to allow for that and still accommodate businesses who need to advertise, we address that in banner form, where the, we are suggesting the banners rather than horizontal are vertical, and we allow for that in the things that we've written. But they can't be attached to the fence. Correct. Am I mistaken? They actually are going to be behind the fence. Does Simler not have a similar sign at the corner of Deer, Deerfield yes, and Highway 9 on the, the, on the fence? to the fence. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That needs to go. I just want to make sure of it. <laughs> Unless they were given specific allowance for that when they were granted the variances. Exact. That was my point. Yeah. And does this go back to is it grandfathered or isn't it? That's not. No. Right. Because it's still the issue in the landscape strip, so... Cause you understand the that, and I do, <laughs> but this is only one example that we all have seen. Yeah. And I'm saying it from Mark's benefit, is that, you know, how do you determine? If I he ran up to my farm on the corner of whatever and said, hey, you got a 4x4 four four sign attached. Well, hearing all this, I would say, yeah, it's been there for five years. Okay? Mm-hmm. And to the discussion that we've had, if, if if we haven't come to that conclusion, we probably should come to a conclusion about the interpretation of that, which is, if it's been there for a period of time, it's probably okay. If, if we don't think we can get away with a grace period and have it expire, 
for whatever. And I think maybe if it we wasn't should, permitted before. Correct. Um, you know, maybe we ask Ken for an interpretation of that. But um, if we can't get away with the grace period, then we, they are simply grandfathered in until such time that they either update, change, <laughs> refresh right. Right. in any way, shape, or form their sign, which would include maybe just brightening, repainting the colors. That would include a change to the sign. At that point, it has to come into compliance with the code. I'm okay. I mean, I think we'll deal with it later, but we do need to define better what we mean by walls. Okay. Well, so are we just going to leave it as a question mark for now? or? No, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the exclusion. How, how, would, um, <coughs> how would someone advertise stalls for rent, pasture board, et cetera, if their fence uh, butted up to or, or overlapped with the right of way? Or would they simply they not have, be? They, they shouldn't be. I mean, we require that all the, the fencing along the right of way be at least three feet interior to the right of way. Yeah, but I'm talking mean, about fences that are. supposed to be 10 feet back from the right of way, 10 feet back from the right of way. on the other side of the fence. Behind the fence. Behind the fence, exactly. That, that's my point. And, right. you know, my little piece of fence that I'm talking about has been there for 30 years. And they obviously didn't pay any attention to it. They didn't you know, pull that, permit for county downtown. That, that sort of thing. And, and there's a lot of that. I mean, you mm -hmm. see it, and I've been watching it lately because of the political signs. Some are way back, some are but, real close. I had really noticed that before. <laughs> um, but for the ones that are close and, and you're not going to, you know, at eight or ten bucks a foot for that four-board, black four-board fencing, you're not going to pull it up and, you know, move it back. Right. Well, then the uh, other problem is when it, uh, fencing is used for agricultural uses, you don't need to pull a fence permit. So the reality is, you know, these equestrian farms could have just thrown up the fences wherever they were. Oh, right. Nice. Oh, I guarantee right. you this fence has been there like, right like Curtis, yeah. you're saying. It's been there 30 years. The question is they've got to put some kind of a freestanding sign inside the, the fence, you know, so the sign's above the fence, so it's visible. Right, but, but there's a site limitation. If the four-board fence is four feet tall, and our sign ordinance uh, max is out at five feet tall. But you, but you don't want if it's a working pasture, you don't want anything in there that right. the horses are going to get. So, so you can't mm -hmm. even if it was above the fence line, you couldn't install. And I'm not trying to over complicate that, but I think it's kind of a fair, mm -hmm. you know, it's a fair need for the area. Mm -hmm. And holographic um, signs. Like the yeah, that's true. I think you ask for a variance too. You get somebody to embroider a blanket that, over the back of the horse. That's that's a lot of trouble for someone who who you know is trying to rent one stall or mm -hmm. is gonna when they get two board two horses in their pasture is gonna take it down. And uh, again, not trying to be difficult, but right. it's a you know it's a pretty high hurdle. For well, a, a well, temporary, use, use the same example. What if it's what if it's the house itself that's for rent or even for sale? Right, we have the same issue. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, where does where does the for sale sign yeah. go on a house that's yeah, for right. sale if it's got a fence in the front? Well, you look at the Simber over here. The one sign the sign they do have over the past Dickies, mm -hmm. it's on the inside of the fence. Right. Very noticeable. Uh, over there past CBS, that house where the bank was going to go. Yes, yeah, down the house. hole. That house is down the hole. Mm -hmm. It has a big sign down the hole in the front yard. It's noticeable when you drive by. So it's, you know, you get the But they don't have horses on that. What's that? Well, that's, 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 that's true, but you can, yeah. you can still put it inside. The what does that have to do with horses? No. <laughs> yeah. it's no, it's a, I mean, it's a, valid, it's a valid point. I just hate to set a, a, a high bar for. I agree. Simple, will will people that aren't accustomed to uh, would we solve would we solve this problem by moving this out of here and saying that sides attached to fences or walls require a permit? But that still doesn't tell us where they can go. Well, it it makes it discretionary, right? So I mean, anybody wants one can ask, and there can a decision yes, can be made. Well, I'm still specific yes, to yeah. tell them. Oh, I mm -hmm. feel like you can have it. No, you can't have it. You have to have something. And then that's going to beg that question, you know, Timber Ridge well, if we loves say, to put their little signs on their fences and Five Oaks and, if, you know, all those guys. If we say no signs like we have, and if they are faced with a hardship, they can come before 
It's a it's yeah, an administrative get, variance, variance, correct? Yeah. For something like that? Or is it a Yeah. 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 Okay, so that, that is a solution until somebody bumps into yeah. that. Are District 1 and 2 allowed to have any of those cookies or? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a five, that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. True. <laughs> probably too healthy to eat this. All right, let's move on. What are we, how are we going to define walls? How are we going to say something oh, about walls? Well, we can say except for, except permanent, for building, permanent walls. Or building walls. Or unless we're other specified or something like that. Forget about trying to define it. Are you, yeah, maybe, are you talking about adding a, a suffix to that sentence and the suffix is whatever the right term is, yeah. suffix, but I mean, uh, you know. It's like subdivision entrance walls, but that's what we're going for, right? Or, or you just simply say something more generic or, or as otherwise permitted yeah. by ordinance. Yeah, unless specifically permitted. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Let us down far too much on that one, Rob. Yeah, well, part of it mine. <laughs> I came in here. Where's the next one? Where are we? End next up one leaving. Will be, um, on page 13, <laughs> at the bottom of the page, under C, setback. You must know that the setback is specified in the condition of the land, otherwise, this article, all permanent ground signs shall set back the greater of 10 feet of the right of way or 20 feet from the edge of pavement. A private street and no sign shall project over the right of way. All next page, all temporary ground signs as described in section 64 and 23 shall be placed at least 15 feet from the edge of pavement. No sign shall be placed on the road and sidewalk. So can, we, can we go back to see where you added? I had a question there. It says greater the, the greater of 10 feet from the right of way. No, we're suggesting, I think, George, that the red. Takes the place of all that, correct, Angela? Mm -hmm. Well, the permit, there are two parts. You got the permit ground size and you got the temporary. Oh, I'm sorry. Size. I'm sorry. My bad. Sorry, I was back in the first part. Yes, I, I, it was my. I thought we were replacing all of that, and we're not. So um, I mean, I didn't. Yeah, you know, I, I kept the permanent ground size at the t ten feet or twenty ten feet from the right of way because they usually have a survey. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Okay. So so go back to the permanent just for the for a minute. So ten feet from the right of way or twenty feet from the edge of the pavement, whichever is greater. Is is there a time when ten feet from the right of way exceeds twenty feet from the edge of the pavement? Only if you had a survey, you would probably be able to figure that out. I mean, I think that would be pretty far. Of course. Uh, well, I'm, I, the reason the reason I'm asking is why? Why in one case do we need the double standard, and in the other case, saying 15 feet from the edge of the pavement, it gets rid of the issue about the right of way. I think it goes back to Angela's point that a lot of times when you're dealing with permanent signs, they can create major signs, and that this. I mean, they just want to make sure it's totally out of the you know, view and as far as being able to see to the right and to the left. So you have to make sure that yeah, But I mean, if, if that's the concern, it's a safety issue. It's going to be a safety issue whether it's permanent or temporary. It's just going to be a matter of how long it lasts. Well, I mean, all I'm suggesting is that the, exactly. the definition for temporary is a lot easier to measure and everybody knows where it is, right? Well, we can change it 20 feet from the edge of the pavement. That's and kind of what I was thinking. Why not just make it 20 feet from the edge of the pavement and forget the right of way? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think we want, well, we wanted to give the temporary signs a break, specifically the real estate signs. Um, they wanted 10 feet, I think, from the right of from the pavement, and we split the difference of 15. Mm -hmm. I don't think we necessarily want to bring the permanent ground signs as close to You know, one of the things we have to make sure that we've accomplished no matter what is to have the signs outside the, the mowing strip, which is typically 10 feet from the edge of pavement. Right. So that was, well, we spent a lot of time thinking about 
the accommodation to the real estate community, mm -hmm. trying to allow them to bring their signs forward. I, I can't commit that we gave as much time to the permanent sign part of that discussion as we did to the temporary sign part. I, again, I mean, it's a consistency issue for me, it, it, and I don't know the answer. If, if 20 feet from the edge of the pavement is, well, no, if it's within the right of way, then you'd go 10 feet from the right of way. All right, never mind. The other thing there is it says from the edge of pavement, if a private street. Private. There's no right away. I'm sorry? There's no right away on the private street. Well, you know, that was my point. I mean, do we really mean private streets? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of privates. Wow. Well, could be in a subdivision or it could be a driveway. Well, subdivisions aren't private streets necessarily. Some of them are, Some of them are but very few of them are. Actually, there's more than what you would think. I mean, there, there, there's, there's a fair amount. amount. That we need to even the new subdivision by Jennifer's house is going to be private street, so. Is that my street private? Huh? Is that my street private? I'm not sure. With the blue? If it's blue, it's private, mm -hmm. yes. It's blue, it's gated. Okay. I guess, I'm, again, I'm just raising a question of consistency. What, the street, you know, Paul's, Paul Street, my street are not private. Somebody that lives in white columns in another part of the neighborhood is private. So there's a different standard for us versus them. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand why. Well, I don't think it's a different standard. It's a different way of measuring it based on the fact that there isn't quote unquote right of way. It's to measure from. It's, it's measure from. I mean, it's still going to be approximately 20 feet from the edge of pavement, whether it's a private or a public street. Unless the right of way is all screwed up and it's totally off or something. But I mean, I think, I think we need to look at sometimes just not, okay, not to say, oh, well, this regulation is totally consistent, but just to look at each situation and understand what best fits it. So. Okay. What? You stand with yours on 15. Well, the second part <clears throat> is intended to address the separate I thing. I know. I, we are trying to I provide totally, an accommodation to, I, specifically to the real estate community, I but totally, it also addresses other temporary signs. Absolutely, obviously. I totally agree. I hope that they would consider that a win based on I would the you know the feedback that we got from the community. <laughs> it's not ten because ten poses an issue, mm -hmm. but it's not twenty, which they've been saying is too far back. Along with the horses. Right. And that would include that too. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot of fence inside of 20 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Just stick it wherever. Yeah. They all are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We're 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 in we're in section 642303 of the temporary ground sign defined. All three of those signs. Um, so I've got the question. All of those signs. Where does it say that those are temporary grounds? It's a little more complicated. I think it's fine. I'm sorry, I missed where you guys are. I'm, I'm still the same one. It says it says all temporary ground signs as described in 642303, and I ask where in 2303 does it define what temporary ground signs are? Oh. Actually, I was going to ask that question. They're temporary. They're not, it doesn't necessarily say that they're signed to the ground. Because signs during the sale are temporary. They're very standard and temporary. Signs during the sale are leased. Four, there's four classes of signs that says permitted in all zoning districts. Right. Is the only one that we're talking about B? Well, all four of those are considered temporary. Yeah, they're all temporary signs. I mean, a banner can go on a wall, of course, but they are all Then why don't we take temporary ground signs out and say all signs described in section 642303-1A, or 1, not 1A, 1, if that's what, we're, if that's what we mean. How about all temporary signs? 
and then that way it'll kind of give, it won't make them have to look at Well, yeah, that's why I do that for the people that aren't going to take the time to go. So just strike the word ground and we've accomplished that? I think that? so. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm okay with that. It's fine. All right. Yep. I mean, it, it just makes it a little more user friendly. <laughs> okay. Can, can we go back just a minute on on section 6423 measurement of sign area does that include windows when we're speaking there are strictly of no. fabricated no. signs these are, where are you these are ground signs ground signs oh, okay yeah. fine <laughs> the other thing robin can we somehow when this is put to final uh, instead of having like under non-conforming signs you got a and then you got to go to the next page to find it yeah, we can fix that. And it's, it runs, I don't want to use the word yeah. rampant, but it yeah, like needs to be cleaned up so everything, yeah. If it's A, it needs to have A. Uh, you've got three in, in this case. And right. No, yeah, so here's B, and then you got to find this page. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, next section, 64-2303. Restrictions based on location, the first paragraph. Um, again, the following okay. signs shall be placed no closer than 15 feet from the edge of pavement. So it's kind of reiterating what was said just previously. Um, under C, under permitted in all zoning districts, banners was inserted. In addition, each new business shall be allowed a banner for 30 consecutive days starting from the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. All banners mounted on the ground must be supported on all sides by a PVC frame. I have a, an issue with that. With um, the PVC? No, the uh, <laughs> the uh, the strike date be, being the issuance of the CO. Um, I I know in, in just personal experience that COs have been issued a long time before a business uh, starts its operation. Um, sometimes, well, anyway, the exceptions don't matter, but the guy that, that was here from NTV or whatever it was mm -hmm. was talking about his grand opening. And I think the, the, you know, the, the, the point there was when he's ready to start, maybe before he's ready to start business, drum up, up some PR, but there could be a, you know, multi-month lapse. My, my thought was to, um, not to, may, maybe not to leave it open-ended, but at least, at least to allow some more, some leeway, you know, not not to exceed or something, 90 what, days. Or, I, was, I was going to say, what if we said it should be allowed a banner for up to 30 consecutive days starting uh, or within 90 days following the certificate? That, that's what I wrote down on my on my review point, but even 90 days sometimes doesn't cover it. That, that puts the onus on, because um, some, sometimes the owner builds it out and doesn't have it leased. And so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can't allow for everything, but that's not that uncommon. Why don't we just say, why don't we just say, why don't we just say up to 30 consecutive days once? Yeah, <laughs> just 30 consecutive days. Once, well, one time. Uh, per, does that make well, a Well, one time really per business. Right. Uh, not property owner, right, but per business. Per, yeah. Does that okay, make can sense? I throw out, um, what about... Um, issuance of business license because usually they don't start their business license until they're gonna but you're saying you want to allow them to do it before they open well the issuance of business license might be a better trigger right because and then that would allow because yeah, they, they have to have that before they're existing. operating yeah. pardon me and then that way it would allow for somebody who's not building out a building they're just taking over somebody's space but they still have to get a new business license we have a lot of that a lot of turnover in some of these strip centers where one person moves out and another one moves in, but they still have to come in for a new business license. What what what's typical on the timing of a business license for for some of these either larger chains or uh, I mean I know it's it's all random for individual small businesses. Well, why don't we just tie it to the next paragraph and say for thirty consecutive days following the issuance of a permit? Because it says a permit shall be required. If they got to come and get a permit for it anyway, just give them 30 days from whenever you give them the permit for the banner. And is that once well, per? 
How do you business not or specify that it's a new business though? I mean, they every business already has its forty days for the year. This is an additional thirty days. One time, right? One for grand, o when grand you're open. Ready to open. Yeah, maybe the issuance of the business license, and that takes care of the new business owner and not tying it to a property owner. I mean, I think the business license is better because it deals with the tenants and then yeah. their businesses. Okay. Now, whether that's not really going to allow them to be able to advertise before they actually <laughs> open, but... Why not? Why, why wouldn't they get a business well, you license? Well, have a CO because... I mean, I guess they could not open and get a CO, but I don't know why they would because they're charged typically... You know, like if they were open in June, they would only be charged for that six month they period. May, they may prorated. decide they want to put up a now hiring banner instead of a, you know, before they open because they don't mm -hmm. have enough employees or something. Right, and they could do that. We can't say what they can say on it. We right. just say for a new business. But is it too mushy to say w within 30 days of issuance of a uh, of a business license, and that could be 30 days before or after? I don't know, matter me. Uh, well, I mean, if you issue it, it's going to be after. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to no, determine yeah. well, what's 30 days before the time you're going to issue it. Yeah, because you don't know. Okay. I mean, we don't know right. exactly when. Right. They don't know that. They barely come in. I mean, typically, most people get their, you know, they want their business license right away so they can open. Like the last thing they do. Right. I think business license work. And the spirit's the same. The objective was to find a way to give new businesses Something. an extra 10 day window. I'm sorry, an extra 30 day window one time. So, like on so top we, of their let me, 40 days. Let me pose a hypothetical. If, if I'm a new business and I come in and I get a permit to put up a banner, does that permit, by the way this is written, allow me to put up that banner for 70 straight days? No. Why? Well, it, for one thing, the cost. And I put an expiration date on each one based on. You so, know, the so cost. each 10 day period has to be applied for separately? Each. Well, you can pay for the whole 40 days at once. But he doesn't think the 30 plus the 40 can be used together. I mean, well, yeah. And theoretically, technically, yeah. Technically, you could. We, can't, we can't control what the banner says, so yeah, technically. Okay. I mean, unless, you, unless each period is permitted separately, that's the only reason I was saying that. Well, they are permitted they separately. Are, I, mean, I mean, they're charged separately. They're charged separately, but they're if if, it want, if the guy wants all forty days at once versus ten days each quarter, you're not going to be able to say no, right? I mean, I would if he pays for it. Explain it to him. <laughs> I, I, I imagine most people would just do the thirty days and then come back. Well, but even if it's an existing business, I mean, he may decide he wants it 40 days at once instead of... Yeah, but well, yeah, the, the permitting process is not going to permit yeah. that. Bottom well, line is we really shouldn't care. I, I think we really shouldn't care. If he yes. wants to have 70 days total in a row for a brand new business okay. and they use it up, we really shouldn't but, care. That's it. But the, okay, but the CO is associated with the building's owner. Right. And which has nothing to do with the tenant. Which has potentially nothing to do with the tenant. And the tenant may well want to put it up 10 or 15 days before he opens, mm -hmm. or she, or whatever. Um, so yeah. it just needs to needs to allow for that. Okay. Yes. I'm afraid that that that's going to uh, prohibit them from getting the grand opening sign out before they open, and they want to start drumming up traffic beforehand. So I I think that's. You could ask their neighbor if they could buy off his 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> Craigslist. But you're, we you're, make a market. Because for, we can't say, well, what is it for? We can't say. I mean, he could ask for that person's uh, 10 days or swap it out. Who knows? I'm just being creative. I don't think you uh, could because aren't we saying specifically that it's for that, you, it's for that business? Good. technically right now like so we don't have the 30-day <laughs> grand opening thing right now so they can come in before the right. license or seal right you know and start using their 40 days 
So, I mean, they, they can do that. It's just it's a pain to keep track of, but they can do that. They can do 10 days, then come get their 30 day grand opening, and then they still have 30 days left yeah, whenever. That's true. Right, but I, I'm, I agree with that. But just to be clear, you can't buy your neighbor's time. No. <laughs> well, why not? You, you can't buy your neighbor's you what? You time. I'm saying if you Cheap. get an extra well, neighbor, neighbor, you buy 10 days your of your neighbor's time. Up a banner for them. I right. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't as long as it's on their business, the business next that? door. So, I mean, who cares? I mean, you can't tell when you're going 40 miles an hour whether it's exactly the right space or not, right. as long as they get attention. But the point but is, what, you, couldn't, no. you couldn't. Buy the other guys ten days mm -hmm. and put it on your building. No. You but can buy their no, ten you days and you, you could put it on his space. Yes, yes I'm okay that's with that. Right. Yeah. They're not going to get extra. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but does that handle it? What What you're saying, Curtis? Are you satisfied with that? Go no. Go through yours again because I'm. I'm I don't think it. I'm, I don't think it is. I believe I'm totally in agreement with you. It is satisfied. Well, the point here is to give them an additional thirty days grand opening kickoff benefit in addition to their part either side of they can span it across the opening however they want to I from a practical standpoint yeah. and I you know I, I think that's I get, yeah um, so COs you might get one and you might have six tenants in a row right or mm -hmm. more you know there's the, you don't get a new CO every time right. you get a new tenant so right so that um, what if we what if we go back to your original concept and said for 30 consecutive days not earlier than 30 days prior to the issuance of a business license and not later than 30 days after well i like that but robin is has a point well, you just don't know I just to be, you can't you can't peg when you're going to get the license well, I guess so you, you could, could just encourage them to come get their business license 30 days so early as possible. well they'll they would be in violation if they put the thing up and, and with those parameters, if they if they put the sign up and didn't get a license within 30 days of putting it up, of course they'd have to pull it down because their 30 days would right. well, expire. Right. But that would put the onus on them. To yeah, get the which I think is okay because I don't. I mean, if you're, I, I if I'm going to so put a grand too. opening up, and, you know, and if it's last, you know, you have a tornado or something, I'm sure it's going to have a business license. That's right. In that period of time, especially since I've got grand opening, I've got a brochure out, I've got inserts. I, I pretty well know when my grand opening is going to be. If you're concerned, oh yeah, right. If your concern is that they have the ability to span that, what if we just said that it's good for 30 days after the issuance of the license? They can decide when to get the license based on when they want to put the sign up with respect to their grand opening. Oh, that's a good point. Because right, so they, they can get the license in any advance time. of any. any right, yeah. Okay, so we're we're back at that point. It it makes sense. They've got control over when they get their license. If they're going to have a problem getting it, they needed to work that out anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, you guys would be surprised at what kind of situations come in where people are asking for inspections for COs when they don't even have the sink connected to the pipe to the to the hair bowl. I mean, it's just really the hair bowl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do that tonight. <laughs> hey, hey, Robin, is, that a um, is there any commercial for, yeah, areas in the city that ball. do not have sidewalks <laughs> in here? Yeah. There could be. Well, I'm, just, I'm just looking at that first paragraph of 642303. The following signs should be placed no closer than 15 feet from the edge of the pavement. What if, the, what if there's no sidewalk? The edge of the road. Of the road. Not okay. So we we okay? So business. We yeah. said business license. Is yeah. that how we yeah. left yeah. it? Okay. 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 Does does D mean that if I want to sell my house, I have to get a permit to put a sign up? Well, we had a lot of questions on that one, didn't we? D. Um, D. Right here. I mean. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. We wanted to change. Let me look at it. That's the only way I can check the room. Page I don't follow you. The size. The sizes are different. Right, right. right. Five square feet for the major roads and six square feet for the other roads, and. Uh, but, but why are we? Why do we require a permit? Just to confirm that. 
I, I'm, I'm not sure why we require a permit. If it doesn't conform, we can have them take it down, right? Well, that's to avoid that, I would hope. Right, because that's money. Oh, okay. I mean, I'd yeah, but I, we aren't, we aren't going to charge people for putting a, a sale sign in front of their house, are we? Not a normal, normal right. temporary but sign. This, but that's what this says. Mm -hmm. No, but it's different sizes. They're larger sizes. I think that one of the issues with these estate lots or large lots, they say, well, we can't see the sign when it's just a little two by two sign. So this is to allow them so to have we, a larger we, temporary sign. So are we saying then that a permit shall be required if the sign exceeds whatever? No, I mean, there's there's no carve out here for a normal a sign. Even for a two by two? Oh, no, no, no. Well, that's what he's, yeah. There's right. no carve out for a normal sign. I mean, this says a permit's required, period. For these, for this type of sign as defined in D. But the sign in D is signs during the sale or lease of property. It doesn't say it's only required for the six or nine footers. It says a, sign's requ a permit's required, period. Yeah, we just need to move that afterwards and say the sign shall not exceed nine square feet on major or two and six. What, what's the standard real estate sign? Six square feet. Well, four up as well. Four up? About six. six. It's about six. Mm -hmm. But our ordinance did we change that to the temporary? Oh. We, we don't. We didn't allow. We just allowed the four square feet. So why don't we say a permit shall be required if the sign exceeds four square feet? Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. That's the point. Right. But he's I know it's a point, but it doesn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> yeah. huh? Real estate agents. What? Yeah, it's some upset people with that one. To do well, to get a permit. Feet. Yeah. First of all, they're not even going to know that. I think, well, I've, never, yeah, I've never even heard of that before. Yeah, it's just trying to clarify that if you have a normal size real estate sign, you don't need this acting as a temporary sign that you don't need a permit for. Okay. So these agents are going to have absolutely no idea. Well, the, I mean, a lot of the agents have agreed that, that that's what they're going to do. But you know what? <laughs> Typically, agents, though, that sell the high end homes, well, wouldn't you go ahead? I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm thinking too. What did this come out of? Some of the large acreage that they're trying to sell. This is this is not acreage. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with acreage. I know, but didn't some of this come out of realtors who tended to sell the larger lots that weren't in the subdivisions, but that were just along whatever Hopewell Road or? We. This is one that was tough for me, to be honest with you, and so it. it Took, well, it took a lot to get me to here because I think a real estate sign is a real estate sign. And if you really want that property, regardless of the sign, you're going to go figure out what that property is for sale and who it's for sale by and what the price is and how much acreage it is. Agreed. So, in accommodation to the real estate community, which is really a voice of one that we've been hearing at great volume in our meeting, we've made an accommodation here. Well, it wasn't Jennifer, I know. No, no, it wasn't. no, no. no. And she claims to speak for the real estate community, or at least for the Ms. Milton Business Association real estate community. Yeah. And so to accommodate her, we've, we've cooperated with her request to allow for larger signs on roads primarily that are at a raised speed or higher volume. It has nothing to do with how big the lot is. It could be a one acre, quarter acre lot, which we don't have any quarter acre, but we maybe a one acre lot but if it's on Highway, you know, State Route 9, or if it's on Highway 40, they can have these larger signs. But, but if, if I, and I, I don't know, because I've never met her, but if we take Jennifer's, um, let's say Jennifer's right, and, and the normal sign is six feet. Right. The way this is worded, it says to me that if you want to put a sign on a major road, you got to pay for a permit, period. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't recall that we talked about the permit part. I understand where you're going with it for sure, where you want to be able to regulate it if it's going to be a larger sign. I mean, you take that out, that's just, you know, What are other ca counties, any idea, like other jurisdictions, what? Um, I've, I've just never heard of a permit. 
to have to get a well, permit. Well, if we strike the permit part, it just, it just makes the enforcement a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And we Completely have to decide if we're a city that's going to want to put do that it. on the, put the onus of that on the enforcement yep. officer yeah. to do that. Just so scratch the permit. On the agent to find out and they're not going to do that. Right, they're going to put up what they want to put up. They're going to put it up where they want. And actually, they don't even put it up. It's the sign company and all of that that you place your order and so have we become a less business friendly city if we absolutely. Um, absolutely. they put it up and then we say oh gee you didn't absolutely. come before us and we're trying to be a more business friendly mm -hmm. city by writing something like this in here the permit have we just complicated our problem i think that you have but again that's just my opinion i mean i will it's say okay. i have a lot of people maybe it's just my own what i'm remembering is that when I have realtors call about properties and say, well, what can I put up? And I say, well, you can only put up to three two by two. Whatever. They hate that. And they hate it. They're like, what do you mean? Can I have a bigger sign? So I'm just saying that's just from anecdotal mm -hmm. information that. And that's the that's the real estate agent that we were trying to accommodate with this. So we are a more business friendly city. So that you can answer for them. You can have a six square foot sign or a nine square foot sign. Raising it, you know, ninety percent or whatever of the properties to the standard six square feet. And then six. if you are on these faster roads, which may or may not have a larger parcel of land, right, faster and high and more volume. Right, you can get your nine feet. Nine <clears throat> right, but okay. six square feet is not required uh, uh, for permitting today. Well, we can. It's not allowed well, today. It's not allowed at all. What, what's allowed today? Four square. Feet. Four square. Okay. All right. So, so this suggestion is four is changed to six, with a new bar, a raised bar, requiring a permit now instead of no permit. Well, what about uh, what about requiring a permit for nine feet? You know, the exception. I kind of have to agree with the nine because the nine. That's that's. Large. Well, that's an estate. It's three by three. It's not huge, right? And that can be done nicely. You know, the frame. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it can be done badly I too. I but. think the ones that we do, in Buckhead, like along Peach, were like eight. But question for you: the permit. What's the the charge for a permit? <laughs> well, technically, it's based on the cost of construction. Um, Cost of construction on the sign. The signs. So it's probably around two hundred dollars. The more you spend on the sign, the more you permit it. It's like seventy-five dollars, I think. Or like a $500 sign. You know, I would be more concerned about the time and the hassle. Um, you know Roswell. It, it took me over six months to get a sign in the historic district over there on Sloan Street. Over six months. I mean. Yeah, it was just, you know, before it was over with, I just wanted to throw my hands up and say, forget it. And uh, that's, you know, I, that's wrong. That's not right. <laughs> and uh, I understand the intentions are good, and in the end, it fit the area well and all that sort of thing, but it can't be that painful. So it's not $75 if it, you know, if it takes you six weeks and someone's anxious to get their house on the market. I, I, I know I'm preaching the choir on that. I'm just so so maybe four is changed to six still requires no permitting and if you want to do an exceptionally large one, you gotta permit, permit it. it. And if yeah. it really is so big that they don't care, they can stick with six. You would just say that the nine square foot would require a permit? Right. That doesn't bother me because it's an exception. Does she have issues with six? Does anything greater than six? No. Anything greater than six? I mean, I agree. With no limits? That's pretty small, but... Pardon? No, I was just, I, I was just saying I, there should be a limit, but I was saying we, we shouldn't say a nine-square-foot sign requires a permit. Okay, right, because it could be seven or eight. Okay, all right, valid. That's valid. So, right. Anything Maximum. in excess of six feet? 
Well, right. we don't want them to exceed nine feet. To a, well, to so a maximum. Signs do not nine. exceed nine square feet, but anything greater than six requires a permit. Permit. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, that's good. I had a question as as about the roads. I'm sure someone will right vet this. She got her six. Um, I don't even know what State Highway 40 is. Uh, you mean 140? It's one. Uh, that's Arnold Mill. Mill. What's the it's difference between Mill. State Highway 40, 140 and Arnold Mill Road? No, it's, it's the, the extension, I think. The yeah. Just oh, it changes. The extension. Right. So, so I, I think um, it's not a big deal, but why would 372 or Birmingham Highway not be on here? Because that's, that's one where they want those big signs. People are buzzing by. Providence Road. I thought we had. We did Francis have 372 Road. on here originally on my list. We just didn't capture it. I have. I'll double check, but I, I got the list from Public Works, so I'll double check it. I can give you my okay. original list, which was actually looking at it now. Only the only one's missing is three seventy two. Three seventy two. I have U.S. Highway nineteen, which is Highway four hundred, State Highway three seventy two, State Route nine, Arnold Mill Road, State Highway forty, Windward Parkway, Cogburn Road, Hopewell Road. Where, 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 you mean State Highway one one forty? No, it's forty. Where's forty? There is no forty. I thought it 40 was um, part of Arnold Mill. No, it's 140. 140. 140. Is it 140? Yep. Okay. And also McGinnis. No, it's it's McGinnis Ferry instead of McGinnon's. Oh, McGinnis. Huh. Yeah. What about and I also you? read Cog Bum, and it's, it's Cogburn, but I see where the R goes yeah, into the N, right. so it's, it'd be Cogburn. What about New Providence? <laughs> well, guys, it says, it says major roads include. It doesn't, it doesn't limit it. Okay, so we no permit required on a six footer anywhere. Right. Permit required on anything between six and nine. It was intended. If they to have to permit, they'll request the road, and it'll either be denied or not, as long as they're it's not overly lent or restricted to to just these. If New Providence makes sense, or, or uh, was that your intent, Paul, to say that the intent was for it to be just this list of roads? No more. Why would you exclude Birmingham, for example? No, Birmingham, Birmingham is on the 372. Yeah. We, and we, we just added the roads are defined to be. Yes. Of course, we, we had missed Highway 372 on the original list. That's on, the list that you're seeing on this in red. So Birmingham is 372. Is it on? I'm Birmingham it Highway. Should have been on should have been. It's not on here. Okay. Oh, okay. Birmingham right. Highway is different right. than Birmingham Road. So Fair Birmingham enough. Highway. Which is Highway so, 72. So anything else, you, you permit or no permit, it's six feet, which which is fifty percent more than is allowed today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what? Why would you not include New Providence Road? I don't recall it being listed on the city's list of major it's a forty-five roads. mile an hour zone. I got the list from um, Public Works. It was just in. Well, and because actually New Providence is more, um, well, no, I was, that's not, that wouldn't be a good answer. <laughs> I don't have an answer. No, we don't need a public works definition. Well, it's, it was intended to be primary collector roads. If we consider Providence, New Providence Road to be a primary collector road, it probably should be on here. But unless we're going to define them as primary collector roads, we don't need to worry about whether we're consistent. If we just right. say major roads are defined to be right. for this ordinance, we can make whatever roads we want. I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying we don't. I don't think we need to fit a definition somewhere else in the ordinance of what our major arterial roads or collector roads or private roads or if, right. we can, if we can define which roads have to be subject to this requirement. I think the question then now be: Do we want Providence in or out? Well, cer certainly a major road. Do you want us to just 
Well, we don't necessarily want to be adding roads if we don't have to. It's, right. it's kind of, you feel that that's, that's a valid road, I right? think. It's your list, in a sense, that you're creating. So. And I'll tell you where I... I'll tell you where I struggle is in... It wasn't that long ago we all sat around a table and defined all of our scenic vista roads. Right. And this is pretty much every that's right. scenic vista road that's that, right. we, that's a, that we listed. That's a good rationalization. Um, well, it is and it isn't. You know, are we? It's like, are we going to muddy up our city with bigger signs and all of our vista roads? Oh, I see what if, you're saying. If if New Providence is consistent, which it probably is, with the rest of these we've listed, yeah. then it ought to be on here. I, I you know I just in I would I would say it was. In today's so these days market, some of these signs are going to become permanent. <laughs> yeah. So do we add New Providence? Five May. Well, we can put that let the mayor and council. Well, whatever you put, and, and and the more exceptions you make, uh, the 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 more challenge you're going to get. Someone's going to say Bethany. Someone's where, wherever they want one. Right. Is where they're going to going to. Uh, no, I mean, per personally, this, this goes back all the way to the beginning, right? I mean, and I referred to it before. But it goes all the way back to the beginning, where it says that, that the purpose is. To ensure the fair and consistent enforcement of sign standards, um, and to protect the rights of individuals and businesses to convey their messages through signs. If it's a for sale sign, why not the same size everywhere? Well, I, I understood the objective to be not it's more expensive, so it ought to have a fancier sign, but. Uh, so more, it's more, more propensity for uh, for large acreage or estate type type mm -hmm. homes, combined with uh, with with maybe speed and traffic that that uh, reduce the ability to to read the sign, read right. a smaller sign. And that was the appeal that was made to right. us was was the, was the ability to read the sign and yeah. the speed. Right. And then yeah. if you add to that the measure of volume. Those are all very fair measures to make. Yeah, no, um, I, I would say the propensity for the larger estate lots is going to be on other than these roads. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. But I, I don't agree that that should be the criteria. No, no, I, I agree. It's definitely got to be tied to the ability of the person traveling the road to see the sign. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know how anybody could, I mean, I guess everybody could challenge it, but I think this pretty well says what we wanted to with that addition. I, I mean, you know, Bethany, yeah, but... Well, Bethany's thirty-five miles. Thirty-five mile an hour. So, boom, mm -hmm. you got an answer. Yeah. So, so all of I Bethany think. Is. So, what, what, instead of naming roads, why don't we say any any road where the speed limit is forty-five or greater? Well, well then I don't want one limit. I don't particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the rest of the city. Yeah. Well, okay. So well, I don't want one. So we're adding three seventy-two and we're adding new problems, and so we call it a day. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I really didn't want one on Hopewell Road, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can strike Copa on behalf of Fred. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hear Tyler's only 40, by the way. Yeah. Okay, um, just under that, under agricultural district on page 16. Um, we, we don't have an agricultural district. Should be right under, okay. right under your list of roads. We don't have an agricultural district. We have an AG1 district. Why are we distinguishing between agricultural and single-family residential? We don't have those districts. That's how it's all. I mean, that's how it's always been. But well, we don't have an agricultural district. If you're talking about agricultural use within AG1, well, zoning. I mean, it's a zoning there is no agricultural zoning. AG1, AG1 is agricultural. AG1 is also single-family residential. Well, we have agricultural well, district. Be, yes. Well, single-family residential is also R two four five. But from a zoning standpoint, there's only one zoning classification. There is no district for agricultural. Huh? I'm not trying to split here. The only difference between uh, number two and number three is the flagpole on a lot versus the flagpole in development. Everything else is exactly the same. Well. There is an agricultural district that does allow single-family residences within that district. 
And that's different from a single family district, which is R2, R3, and on up. And right. CUP. I agree. So okay. so I'm I live in an H E one. Do I fall under two A or I mean two or three? Two. Why? Because I'm in, I'm single family residential. I know, but it's just the way we define the zoning ordinance. I know okay. it sounds okay. you know counterintuitive, but that's just well, I don't think it's counter counterintuitive as well, much as it's it technically it's incorrect. Technical yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense, yeah. but it's that's wrong. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And go either way, but I, you know. So something else we have to fix, but probably not tonight. Well, but it's not something to be fixed. What it's just, it's yeah. I don't know. Well, it, it, there's a mixed bag there. in here, right? We're, we're talking about agricultural districts as if it was a zoning classification. Yeah. Later we talk about OI districts, and it is a zoning classification. Right. Well, I believe that it was intended was a agricultural district is AG1, is a district. Okay. It may just be called something a little bit different than AG1. AG dash one and then parentheses agricultural and then district. It's agricultural. I, I, I guess all I'm asking, Robin, is why isn't two AG one? I we can change that. That's fine. That's good. The other question I had here, just for you guys that worked on this a lot to think about, is that you know, it says each residence may display up to twelve square feet with no single sign greater than four feet. Everybody that hangs out at Georgia, Tennessee banner will not be able to do that. Is that truly the intent? We didn't talk about that one. Yeah. Anybody that hangs out a college banner on game day will not be able to do it. Because I got one now all the time. I hang, I hang five. Well, <laughs> tough. You can't do it anymore. <laughs> I'm just I'm grandfathered. You're grandfathered. Darn right. You, yeah. take it down, you take it down once, yeah, you can't put it back My up. My hooks are permanent. Huh? Huh? My hooks are permanent. What flag? Indiana? No. Yeah. no. College flag. Yeah, what, what college? That could be the determining factor. Well, <laughs> I don't have a problem because it's produced, so nobody's going to raise it in a can except my neighbor, anyway, Notre Dame. And he's got, we do have SEC, but I, I, don't I understand. Yeah. I'm just. Is that really what we Better do now? Wisconsin. Well, oh, I have Wisconsin. I have Auburn. I have Alabama. I have Furman. And I have Gardner. You know, Where are you? Where do you live? Where do you want to go? One, five, two, eight. Yeah. So. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, right. what I'm trying to deal with, if you look at four, <clears> right, four says flag size shall be not more than 24 square inside. feet. Is that college <laughs> thing a flag? Some papa. Yeah. Yes. Or is it signage? I would consider it a flag. I would, yeah, I would consider it a flag. I mean, I mean, we just we don't. I don't think that's an issue. We just don't. I, I think we consider it more of a flag. I mean, you could. <laughs> so. Yeah. So the, I'm just thinking about the guy near on Freemanville. He's got the Auburn flag <laughs> affixed to the. Fence. Fence. <laughs> <laughs> and it's there the entire football season. Yep. <laughs> he got an exemption. Yeah, well, it's, he, agree, it's been there for a long time and it's permanently. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Does Auburn have anything to do with that? Yeah, right. I think <laughs> it has. The, the other thing, not to get nitpicky, is yeah. that the way we've defined signage, if you put a Christmas wreath on your front door, that's signage. Mm -hmm. And it's included in the four square feet and the 12 yeah. square feet. Yeah. Well, we keep, well, I thought we were trying to be more yeah friendly. friendly. So did I. That's my point. I so think we're, we're going the other direction. Right now. Yeah. Huh? But we're just not. We're silent on those things. No, we're not. It says each trust. It, it, yeah. Okay. Right. So we're moving along. By being along. silent, we're okay, right? Amen. Otherwise, I'm going to go down and join that Wall Street group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number six says each. Thank you, George. Um, development may post one banner maximum oh, 24 square good. feet, maximum 5 feet tall for a maximum 40 days during graduation season from May 1st to June 15th. The permit is not required. Since the difference between May 1st and June 15th is it's not 40 46 days, days why, yeah. can't, why don't we just say not earlier than May 1st and down by June 15th? Okay. Matter problem. Right. 
Sure. These are your. This is you who well, made this change for last time, and now you're nitpicking on what you put in I last time. <laughs> you I, 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 no, last time I said I don't. You think said May first to June fifteenth. Uh, I don't know. I'm not saying change that. I'm saying leave that. You don't need the forty days if you say. Oh. that's all I'm saying. He said it's forty-six days. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think what Angela was saying was that's the season, <clears throat> so you could have forty days with an income that season. You say be you between May. Between yeah, but, May. But the difference between May first and June fifteenth is only forty-six days, so they got a six-day leeway. <laughs> <laughs> so you, we're trying to be friendly. It's a okay. <laughs> hey, Amen. I'd rather say. The, I'd rather put this back it's, in the front where it says it's not allowed. Than, you know, no. So are we changing? Are we changing anything? No, there? leave it out yeah, of here. Okay. So again, it goes back to single family, the same insertion sets. Yep. Apartment, townhome. That's that double space between development and May on number ten, page eighteen. <laughs> Typo, man. Okay, sometimes the, it all gets fixed. Cruz, I'm just My, my helper's not helped me at all tonight so far. Okay. I'm, I'm leaving those morsels for Fred. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then again, I guess the next Actually, you found some typos in the next document. <laughs> the next change is page 20 that I'll fix. Really should be 10 instead of 6. I don't have a count. Um, same thing. Same thing. Same Question thing. on this one, though, Robin. Okay. This, by definition, mixed use has all sorts of different things in it, right? Um, right. And it can be quite segregated if the development is large enough so that while it may be zoned as mixed use, it's got a large residential area in one place and something else. Are we sure we want to have these larger standards, 32 square feet and so on, for for signs in the in the residential areas of mixed use, or are we really talking about in the commercial areas of a mixed use district? Well, I think that um, the 32 square feet actually is consistent with the single family of a split. 16, I think there are about 32 square feet for a subdivision sign. Yeah, that's, that's the first one. Okay. It says 32, 33, yeah. So we're just not, we're allowing it to be either split or not split or whatever, so. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, except it. it Again, everything up to this point, with the exception of, did we already do a lot? Yeah, I mean, everything has basically been residential, right? Right. And and now we're talking about, in, within here, there's going to be commercial. So these same things are going to apply to the commercial aspects within the mixed use, right? Right. And I would also say that, actually... You know, signs shall not have changeable copy, as an example. That means a business within a mixed use can't change the copy on their sign. If it's a freestanding sign, but I think we do that anyway. We don't. We don't allow changeable copy anywhere. We okay. could probably actually just delete that because we have that in other places. Mm -hmm. okay. And also, um, what was I going to say about this? Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure we were okay because it, it it is different. Oh, and then also, what would Trump? It would, for instance, our biggest mixed juice is in Crab Apple, right? And the Crossroads, and so then they would. They need to go by the sign orders and the crab apple overlay. So, if anything conflicts with this, we go. Okay. I mean, they're going to go by the overlay sign standards anyway. Where do we define that precedence? Um, it's in the front. Is, is it in here, or is it in the overall it's ordinance? In the overlay. It's in the overlay. It's in the overlay. In the, overlay the beginning. Okay. Each tenant is allowed 
I think we need to change this to some numbers so in case there's a difference. Well, I mean, one, two, three, four, whatever. So not, yeah. Each tenant is allowed one maximum 24 square foot banner per the time limit stated in section 64.303. The banner shall be placed on the tenant's storefront or wall space. If building location renders installation on the wall not visible from the road, an administrative variance may be applied for to allow the banner to be installed on the ground. The variance shall condition the banner placement to a specific location on the development. All ground-mounted banners shall be installed on a PVC frame with a vertical orientation. No more than four ground-mounted banners may be displayed in the zone development at one time. Have okay. questions about it? No, but I'd like, we went too fast because I have a lot of comments on page 25, please. All right, well, before we do that, can we just yeah. finish this one? Sure. And this is one that we, I think, listened to you guys pretty long and hard about. It's also one that we spent a lot of time um, talking about. And if, if nobody takes any offense to it, hooray, because it's, it was, took a lot of work to get to this one. Yep, hearing none, let's okay. go back to friends. Is, is the first part of that intended to be something that is all of those, or is it multi-tenant retail, or commercial, or office, or institutional? It's ORs. Right. Yeah, it's intended to be ORs. So or, you may have, well, you may have a development with all of it, but it's OR. Okay. Do you think it needs to say OR? Well, I, it would be clearer, I think. It, 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 it would say, you know, for developments that include multi-tenant or whatever, however you want to word it. But okay. I, when I first read that, I thought it was trying to say if it had all of that. So this is what it's intended to be allowed for each of those different, okay. def, you know. So it's for multi-tenant, retail, comma, commercial, comma, office, comma, or institutional developments. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, should go back to Fred's. Uh, on, um, Are we through with this one? Or are we coming back to it? Well, I thought we were done. No, no, I, I wanted to, I, I, I want to make sure that I, oh. I, I should be honest with you, I didn't read it closely enough. I okay. apologize. All right, that's right. Take your, take in, your time. In the second one, are, are we saying the only place that they can place a banner is on the storefront or wall space? Yes. And wall space doesn't have to be the front wall. It can be correct. And storefront does that literally mean the front of the store? Mm -hmm. Okay. So with these, with these, uh, as an example, if you take one of the assembler buildings that is uh, one of the out parcels where the front of the store faces into the development. They can't put it on the side facing Highway Nine. It has to be on the front of the building. That was the wall space. Sorry. That's what that's what the wall space is. You can put it on your front or back or side. So you can put it on any side, basically. You only get one. Okay. And you choose the you choose the orientation. Okay. Our preference is to have it be on the building. That's that's really what what this was written with that in mind is we'd rather have banners if they're going to be applied that they be applied on the building. And if that doesn't work, we make an accommodation for ground placement. So if they think that a, a back or sidewall is going to accommodate them better than their storefront because the orientation of the building on the property, they can do that. Remind me of the time limit. I don't remember what it said. 40 days for the year. Oh, is that one okay? Yeah. Okay. Plus 10 more. 30 for the grand opening plus 40 for, for anybody who's not a grand opening person. And the 40 can be uh, contiguous. How do we define zone development? Uh, is, is 
number from target to coals is on development? Technically, it's two, it's two different zones. So, how do we define zone development? So, it's a, a zone district. So, it does it defies property lines. I mean, you can have multiple properties within the zone. So, if they'd, so come, if they'd come in to have that zoned as one property instead of two, it would have been one instead of two. So the mere fact that they did it in two pieces means that they're allowed more signs. More, more signs, yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. They, they were an exception because of the specifics that yeah. they got as a and if they, and if, they, if they were to subsequently get approval to put something on the parcel beyond coals, not a gas station, but something, that would be yet another sign. No, that's part of the zoning, that, the second zoning. It was? Unless they come in rezoning and cut out that corner piece, but yes, that was part of the zoning. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry, go back to 25. Well, I'm okay. And I I looked ahead, uh, Paul, to page 33 on which was crab apple. Sorry, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, which, yeah, which was crab apple as it related to permanent and temporary wind signs, mm -hmm. which is... And uh, you're opening up a can of worms for a new No, no, there that, no that, that's perfect. That That's okay. We'll get to that one. Right. However, and I agreed with it, full. Good. However, my question is, why would that not be the same in the State Route 9 overlay? Whoa, whoa. I thought you were talking about 20, page 25. I am. Yes. Page 25 says that all permanent and temporary signs and windows shall not Very exceed 5%. What are you talking about? It's not on my page 25. Page twenty five is is the wall is, signs. is the wall give me signs. your uh, is the graduation sign in mobile home parks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's page twenty six. State. Ah, uh, I'm I'm working off of my <laughs> rough copy and also the new copy. That's okay. What, what section okay. are you looking at? I am okay. looking at sixty four twenty three twenty four state rock okay. nine over eight. K. Wall signs shall not exceed one hundred mm -hmm. square Where are you? Or Okay. It's the bottom of the page. Bottom of the page. There you go. That's it. Highway 9 is 5%. Crab Apple in Birmingham is 3%. 26. Page 26. No, no, not according to when we get over to the red line. No, what changed was um, the window signs. Yeah, not the permanent wall signs. See, that K is wall signs. Yeah. Shall not exceed 100 square feet. Of, right there. Or 5%. Oh, yeah. And it's the window signs that change. Well, where did the window signs change on State Route 9? Yeah, it's L. It's actually L. Yeah, it's the red on the very top of page 27. Ah, well, L was up the other one. Okay, 27. Gotcha. <laughs> see, see where L is here? Yeah, I know I got the same thing on my. So, okay. Only. Only make the, the which is on the sides of the yeah. oh the side doors. Mm -hmm. and I I hope that we would have someone here from either uh, Coca Pelli's Bakery or uh, the Dog Wash because yeah. I purposely went out and measured each of their windows, <laughs> which were 34 inches by 73 inches, including the top part being divided by three small panels of glass. That's 2,448 inches of glass. Square inches. Square, square inches. inches. Yeah, get it right. Each decal cupcake in, is in three windows. If we would approve at least 10%, they would be able to have theirs. This is 30%. That's correct. Yeah. So, and the same was true. So, so they should be they should extremely be satisfied. Well, now, again, this still has to be... Adopted by the mayor and that, council. No, I so but can. this is so what this is what the sign ordinance subcommittee is suggesting to the planning commission. Are, are you suggesting that that uh, and I'm not I'm not being facetious. Are you su suggesting that thirty percent <clears throat> may not be necessary? No, I'm just saying. I I was only saying that ten percent for sure met what they presently have. Well, that does not include that, all of the. American Express, um, all those things that are in the door. Well, okay. the doors, just, door and side windows are, which are, are excluded. excluded. Well, that, but that's is it the, e each window, Fred? Mm -hmm. Yes. Not total glass area, but each window. Each window. And it measured what? Uh, 2,448. What did you say inches. dimensions were? 
34 by 73. Okay. So, well, 34 by 72 right. is the 2000. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. But the but the, the the point there is, and and we're we're making a mistake, and we know we're making a mistake. Are they open or closed? Are they open or closed? In, in <laughs> some scenarios, right? Because depending on how much glass you have, ten percent's fine, or thirty percent's grossly excessive, and um, and and someone's going to take advantage, and we'll be chuckling about it. You know, or or wailing and gnashing our teeth, and without a without a, a fair amount of study, you know, to fine tune it, I, I don't know what the alternative is. I'm not suggesting we we just gridlock on it, but 30% is arbitrary. And we sat here and we talked, and the, those guys were angry, so there wasn't a lot of, I don't think, um, objective thinking going on. You know, it was more of emotional. I thought. So I, I I don't know what the alternative is, but thirty percent is a, a hip shoot. Well, my uh, whole point was twenty percent. Ah, I think that's would, great. I, I, yeah, that that's would, great exam. That's a great yeah, example. Would certainly, uh, I would say. And she didn't even have a heavy one. I, I mean, there was wasn't there someone else there that had huge window? The consignment. Like, consignment yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they figured had, even what she had up would be okay with the uh -huh. five percent. Right. Yeah. But, but we, this we looked at examples that uh, were in the greater Milton area. And one example that we had, I think, was was it uh, Lazy Boy over near North Point Mall, where they took full advantage of here. This is exact. Yeah, this is the stuff that we were we had to take into consideration. Now, Mark, do you remember what the Pier One imports? What you thought that was? That was more than. Yeah, you know, Ron. Ron thought that was excessive. Ron, and we both thought it was. We we didn't we didn't put a okay. percentage no, measurement on that. But that's that's got to be. Don't hate on Pier One. North Point Park one. Well, no, we're not. We're just no. It's just, but here's an example no, no, of yeah, an yeah, example. This is an examples of how yeah, ugly it can Park get one? real fast. So are you, are you looking at those anymore? Yeah, fast. So, 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 like so I totally look at look at oh. Looking at those, it's not normal. I don't know. Yeah, but it's just exactly. This is what I'm saying. This is, you know, this is what it can look like if you allow 50%. Yeah. We also said, you know, I think we said per per window, right, Angela? Yeah, did we say per window? Per window. So, so tell me the dimensions again. 34 by 70, about 37? Uh, 34 by 73. So it's nominally 3 by 6, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But see, the, the, the thing that you get into that, that I saw is, do you count that window space the up above up the transom down. that's three, uh, well, six actually, you know, I counted that. But well, you can't put any sign no. really there. So, I mean, it's... We talked about whether it's an architectural feature or not in, in some what cases. If, what, if we, what if we, and how big were the decals, what did you say? Um, in this particular case? Ten percent, less than ten percent, right? Is that what you said? No, ten at ten percent, uh, all of the cows at both places uh, mm -hmm. met what they have now, so, which are the so five tolls. To, Curtis, to Curtis's point, what what if we said that that what was allowed was the lesser of uh, or the greater of, I should say. No, lesser of probably the, le the lesser of of uh, two square feet or thirty percent. Two square feet. Two square feet is tiny. Yeah. Well, the cupcakes meet two square feet. And one cupcake, right? No. No. All, one, of, them. all of them. No, each the, one. Each, yeah, each one. cupcake and each one. Too. I thought you said, what, say what you said again. I misunderstood. Okay. Each cupcake. Um, well, each cupcake is 10%? Yeah. Oh, I'm not Of each, a, of each window, window, though. Of each window. How many cupcakes are in a window? One. One. So Today. Two, so, so two square feet would, would allow them to put their cupcakes up, right? Right. As she has it today, and that's a, no, that's yeah. all that all I wanted yeah. to do was see right. what the break point was. In other words, you know, are we out there saying take those paws down because, you know, they're one and a half inches too big? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the way it was coming across. So I said, well, let's go out and just see what it amounts to. 5% did not fly. 
ten percent. They just barely made it at ten percent. So, uh, being a retailer, seeing this, uh, I would have to say twenty percent would be to me. I said what I said before the wrong way. What I meant to say was 30%, but with a cap on how many square feet that could be. So mm -hmm. up to 30 square feet, but not 30%, but not to exceed X amount of square feet. And so I said two because your example, those are under two. Right, they are. 5184 square feet. If you had two six by six foot panels on either side Inches of the door. feet. You were trying to use them feet. Are you doing a feet? Well, you said 5,000. Oh, 5,184 5, is so the two. six by six foot. Right. Square inches, but yeah. see, I converted yeah. in a matter of seconds. Yeah, right. No, University of Georgia. With his, with his calculator. Um, so, so the point is that's not excessive. You know, you could have a six by six foot panel on each side of a door easily. And um, what, what's what's 30% on, on either side, hundred and or excuse, excuse me, fifteen hundred and fifteen hundred. Ten square feet. Yeah. Uh, on e on either on either side. Well, mm -hmm. oh, if it's thirty, if you said thirty square yes, feet. Yes, yes, yes. On either roughly. side. I mean, um, that may be okay. There there may be scenarios where that's not offensive, but but uh, we can't control content, right? No. Nope. There could be. Scenarios well, where it's coming. I was later. I was suggesting to your point. <laughs> no, I know it. I know it. I was just right. yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can say thirty percent, but put a physical cap. I understood. Right. That's I, not going to work for a bigger window. Right. Why? Because the, the bigger window, if you cap it at a certain size, they're going to have you the same size as a as a yeah. smaller window, even though you have thirty percent. Yeah, but the, for me, the issue is the size of the sign. The cap size. So I don't care how big the window is. My issue is the size of the right. sign. But it's, I, I would think it's, you know, having without a proportional dimension, it's going to look George worse pass than. Those down. In fact, George, pass those signs those down so you can see what we're talking about. Well, I, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, and let those guys see that too. That's great. It's a great example. And and you could cluster it so. So bank all your. Or no, you could we said you, we're saying you can't oh, each. You can't per. Okay, so it's limited to that window. Correct. Each individual you can't, window. You uh, can't trade window open open windows for filling in one full window. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if if I think about OBD, the the windows are very long and fairly narrow, relatively speaking. I mean, they're they're not normal proportions. They're longer than they are narrow. I think. Yeah, but they're but they're big. I mean, they're yeah, just, yeah. They're huge but, but that's my point. So if you take thirty percent of that whole thing and you put it all at the bottom, mm -hmm. right? You're going to block the window for x. You could block the window for x amount of feet off the bottom because you got seventy percent of it mm -hmm. free, but it's all above that. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's where I was because in the measurements, you know, the top you couldn't use. So when you take that out of the equation and shrink it down. Yeah, you know, that's not much window space. Yeah, but you can't if it's if it's one window, you can't take the top out. No, if it's a separate window, you can take it out. If it's a transom or something. Yeah, well, I took it was a transom, but I took that whole square being 30, 34 by seventy three, included the transom. Mm -hmm. But we're offering a non cumulative limit on three different, at least three different signage scenarios, right? Right. Windows, uh, sandwich and fixed of some kind. So it's not like windows are their, are their, are their only option for, for, for signage. I mean, it may be that sandwich isn't practical for some applications and so on, but anyway, I wasn't trying to gum it up with that 30% being arbitrary, but I could just see that. Yeah, there'll, there'll be examples where that it just feels high. It didn't make any sense at all. Well, I would mean, change it twenty percent. I'd I'd be comfortable with twenty percent. Twenty be fine with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to argue. You guys want to you know, back we, it off? We we can't be in the business of trying to keep everyone happy because it's Im it's impossible. However, we are trying to be responsive. Um, yeah. Is that arbitrary compromise going to oh. be met with with unhappiness and pitchforks and I do not think so. Or? Well, uh, in, I, all, in all fairness, we. 
Which what talked. you did, we've got some data that says that 20 percent is adequate. Absolutely, 10 percent was adequate. Well, I'm just saying, well, they, they, don't. they had no well, data. They just threw out 30 percent and said that's what they need. Yeah. What, 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 no, they were saying 50, as you remember. 50. What, what about what, what about 20 percent and a, and a minimum that may be above 20 percent if they have less window space? Something like that, so that twenty percent doesn't accidentally because if really they have limited window space, then it becomes like a billboard, and that would yeah, be solid. That would be potentially even so more offensive. Situation of big windows, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so no one likes George's idea of percent or uh, maximum limit. No. Well, I do, George. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I, and but to well, your point. Curtis, I, uh, um, and I'm taking the, for the example of those two people, 20%, uh, uh, they should be more than happy. I mean, two cupcakes per window. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what what more could you want? Yeah. I, I Thank goodness you they were close, because I'd probably be... Because you're allowed two cupcakes per window. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, That's right. <laughs> the new, yeah. the new year I had my measure. Curtis, I had my speech already when they come out and said, what are you doing over here majoring on Fortunately, on Monday, Monday they were closed. The signage but police. I, I believe, you know, they'll probably be calling me tomorrow, but I believe that they should, they would be happy with, with 20%. Yeah. Let's go to 20. Okay. Um, you bet I'm happy with that. <laughs> go ahead, Robin. So this is or is not consistent with the overall? Right now, it's not exactly consistent. Yeah, we'll tweak the light. We need to tweak it to be consistent okay. with this. Well, what does tweaking mean? Okay, I'm going to pull it and pull we'll it. Did you, did you guys, were you offered cookies? We got one in the beginning. District I, 1 and 2 had to ask. I tried, to, I tried to hold them up and Robin shook her head. Well, that's because I couldn't get them. It's a long, oh, okay. it's a long meeting. Well, while we're on this one, I would like to lobby um, for four two. Fred, you lost your mind. For two, two signs. Yes, sir. What? I'd like to lobby for four square feet in in one or in a total of one or two signs. A total of square four square feet that can be in one or two signs. It's a big, that's a big neon sign. It's four. Two by two? It's not that big. So this is what two I, by two. Two by two is not that big. Well, I think what it was was during that council meeting, they looked Same up on the internet to see what the, you know, standard neon, neon was, and that's what it was. Was what? What, two square feet? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think Karen looked on her or whatever. And so well, I would have no problem of, of keeping that the same, two two by two. No, not two by two, two square feet. Because that's four square feet. <coughs> Which is it? Is it two by two yeah, or is it two, two square, square feet? feet? Okay. Okay, so this is that's one, one by one. Yeah. One foot by so one foot. Totally There's one no sign. By one and a half, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One and a half one. by one and a half. There's no sign at. Yeah. Open signs. Open. Open sign. Right. We don't regulate content. No, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> See, you yeah. knew how I wanted to say it, but okay. I couldn't. So this is what um, exists right now in the overlay district, not in the sign ordinance. It says, um, as an exception to the prohibition in G, each commercial establishment shall be entitled to a single exposed neon or LED sign which may only be illuminated during periods when the commercial establishment is open for business. That was, for public that's business. what I thought was missing from here. Such signs shall have a maximum sign face of two square feet and shall be positioned on the interior as a window sign no more than five feet from the main entrance of the commercial establishment. Please note 
so nice, please. Note that the sign is expressly prohibited We're from friendly. flashing, fluctuating, and may not be animated in any way. I didn't write that. New, kinder. Yeah. I think that was, think we need that was a note to you. <laughs> yeah, but we need that part in there, George. Well, yeah. we don't need the police. <laughs> no, 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 I meant the, the part that you said is left out. The, yeah, the yeah. Only, only illuminated during the hours of business, hours of operation. Yeah. I agree. Does that eliminate your need for two? Not if really. it's not on, they're not open. I'd support two myself. What's going to happen to the Chicago guy? Two, two signs. Get, hey, and this is only Highway 9 now. We're not talking no, about no. everywhere. Right. This is Highway 9. Highway 9. Yeah. And I, I would support yeah. two for Highway 9. Mm. How, how many open signs do you need? And one? There's a limited open sign. Yeah. Yeah. It does. He needs to be on the sausage side. Yeah, try. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and George, he's losing a lot of business. And let me tell you, with two signs, two by two, he qualifies for open in that Vienna sign. Not two by two, though. I don't go for two two by twos. I, I was saying a total of four square feet that can be in as much in as many as two signs. Jennifer, you have a sense of the Highway Nine uh, specifics for that? What do you mean? Well, on uh, I mean, this is specific oh, Highway Nine. He's okay. He's That's your district. I don't have a issue about that. I mean, I understand George's point. Which, which? We're a friendly city if we want to be fair. So, so two two square foot signs, two four square foot signs. Which point of George's do you agree with? I didn't say either one of those. No. <laughs> what, I, what I said was a total of square of four square feet. Oh, I misunderstood. I misunderstood. I, I misunderstood. I see one. Okay, some combination not to exceed. Not to exceed four square feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, he's, he's I hear the not I'm a, I'm a like it like this guy. <laughs> Just remember the uh, business where this would be an issue can't come in for variance to get the signs back. What? Say that, well, 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 anybody can come in for a variance on any of this stuff. Right. Sure. Right. I'm just saying you can leave it as it is and you can apply for a variance. But that's not being friendly. <laughs> I'll, I'll yield to your uh, wording. I mean, four feet? Is that, no. Is that, is, is four, four square feet. I'm sorry? Which could is be going to be happy with just one more sign? No. no. I don't know, but I think that, I don't think that that's unreasonable. It did. You guys, it's the same. I we, well, you're opening up it's the, the old. It's the old. Hey, if, if it's two, I mean, they'll want just, four. I mean, it like it is. Well, I think it shows so, that we. So let's go back. To, how big is the red target on Target's building? <laughs> Holy mackerel! <laughs> yeah, um, they did. Okay, so if he comes in for a variance, are we going to give it to him? It would depend upon how he played right, his case. We already did. Well, I know we did for Target, but I mean, that, that to me is the point. I mean, when you're staring across the street at this huge neon sign that's on 24-7, we're saying he can only have it on when he's in operation, so that when he's not well, it's in not operation, exposed. it's not going to be lit. What's that? It's not it's exposed neon. Yeah, it's a different type of sign, technically. That's not it's the point. No. Well, it is a, I mean, it's a sign. What, what's it? It's a, it's a lighted sign. Is, are we objecting to the use of neon? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Why? Your leaders have decided they don't want it. Who? The mayor council. and council. Then let them so, decide so again. So if he illuminates it with argon, we're okay? Well, if it... I don't think well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm being only partially facetious. This eliminates yep. neon and LED. It doesn't eliminate any other kind of illuminated sign in the window. Is it's that right? Is that our intent? No, I mean, any, any kind of exposed tubing or... Because we even had a... Well, never mind. But, yeah, that's the point. No, this says any window signs with neon, fluorescent, LED, or tube lights are prohibited. So if I can come up with some I mean, other... Most of the neon signs are LED anyway. I'm sorry? It's mostly... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if I come up with some other illuminated sign that isn't one of those, then I'm okay. Why am I not okay? Saying there's not really much out there that's not either LED or Doesn't or matter. Neon. Yeah, there, yeah. I mean, there, who knows, Mike, you met something. They are, it's still they're out there. 
yeah, with yeah. with regular I can build, light bulbs. I can build a sign. Oh, with, with, they're there. Uh, with trust me, headlights bulbs. With, right? with well, right. these are with backlit and two regular sixty amp light bulbs. Oh yeah, that's what they used to do, like around theaters. Yeah, exactly. So they are out there. George. Yeah. So so where did where did the two two square feet come from? came from a standard open sign when they did research to figure out if you go to Costco to buy an open sign for your business, it's typically that square footage. It probably they changed it. One by two. But, uh, no, I, no, I heard you, I heard you say that before. I'm sorry, I thought that was the same question. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but that, that means that someone said, and they only get one. Yeah, right. right. Nowhere else. And that, that's my, that's And a lot of it came from when they were trying to allow, when we, when we had to stay around the overlay district open for text amendments, and it was really on their minds to allow at least just one open sign. And the only way to do that non content or content neutral was to describe the size and the number. And council decided to just one. They didn't say two or three or whatever. So I think that if what council was that? Not, not that it not that it uh, automatic. Uh, <laughs> it was early, early early council. Twenty five, twenty eleven. Eleven. Okay. It was early right. in the spring. <laughs> okay. And so that was something that they were really adamant of trying to be more business friendly. I mean that's the same council that sitting today so exactly yeah no it was just done in the spring okay so i'm just saying that they what was that for highway one. nine specifically that was for also? highway nine they didn't do it for yeah anywhere, anywhere else. else it was just highway nine but a so limit of one has already had this <laughs> oh. okay so let me just um make sure when we go back to m that i included um LED lighting or tube lights are prohibited, and which may only be illuminated during periods when the commercial establishment is open for public business. So, so we're going to add the two? No. No, I'm just saying. I'm just adding that portion that talks about the duration of being lit. Paul, did you guys explore this? Well, we talked. The group that we met with, we <laughs> talked about this. We never talked about more than one, and. We were all okay with what was your take? Your, your, did it, was there anyone involved that represented Highway Nine more directly? No, but not not in the round since we last talked about it. We've had two meetings since then. We didn't have anybody from Highway Nine with us. Well, let me ask a question because I I read ahead too. I mean, if I look at Birmingham and Crab Apple, which are yet to come. The only exclusion in Birmingham is neon sign, and the only exclusion in Crab Apple is neon sign. Well, it's the intent is to be the same. You know, that, that it's neon, argon, whatever. Those kinds of signs that give that visual impression are what this intent was. Okay. So, so we need to, we should make sure that they are the same then, because the only they they don't they'd say but, only neon. Right. Right. But. Just again to put all three in perspective, the way this reads right now, it's one sign in Highway Nine and none in the other two areas. That's correct, and that was intentional. And I understand. Okay. But I would support two. I would too. Two signs or two feet? Two square two, feet. Two signs. I I would go along with, with George's. And what does that proposal. What does that accomplish? What does two signs do? Call me and a sausage. But we, well, I tell you, we talked about. I should that use some, like, I should use found somebody that, else. That was that's so well. I'm just thinking of those all those stores along Highway Nine that set back so far from the road, and those business people. They have you know you can't you can't have any signs out on the street. You can't have the little men with the flags. You've got signs that they just you know there's no way to, for them to stand out. It's got to be something that. Catches your eye that you're able to see and Can pick it up. Dunk you don't have people. So, but why does why does two neon signs accomplish that versus one neon sign? Well, one neon sign is probably going to be an open closed. Will be, and that really doesn't do much for you. 
to the guy's point. I mean, I know it was it was funny, but you know his uh, sausage. I'll give you, I guess, give you one example, and we don't have it. Would be, and if you were a donut shop, and it can be flashing, and every morning at six o'clock you had hot donuts. They'll have a neon two by two sign that says hot. a good thing. Mm-hmm. That's the only example, right, that, that I can think of that uh, in uh, many of your independent drug stores, they had a word uh, prescriptions. Mm-hmm. Or RX. Or RX. I, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, I don't look at it as, as necessarily giving them two signs. I mean, I think to Joe's point, if I was as far back from the road as Bobby G's is, I may be happy with just one sign, but I'd want a four-foot sign that says open so that it's more visible from the street. Don't disagree. Right. But, to as we've been discussing, he is entitled to one per the ordinance today that can accommodate whatever he wants to communicate. If he's interested in anything more than that, he can come before mayor and council. And he's not entitled to any today. Well, no, he is based well, on one. Overlay. It was the back door way of getting. Yeah, but he was he's entitled one because of a deal he cut on the side, right? I mean, no, the ordinance. No, no, no. no. Per the ordinance today. Where does the ordinance allow for one? It does it's in, in the Highway 9. In the Highway 9. That's what yeah, I but, 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 but this sign ordinance exists. I know. It, like I said, George, it was a way for council to be able to. We talked about lighting in the Highway 9 overlay and in April. And under that. Um, outdoor lighting they mm-hmm. said as an exception to the prohibition in G which was to um, expose neon lighting it said each commercial establishment shall be entitled to a single exposed neon or LED sign which may only be illuminated during periods with blah 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 so that's in the overlay district it's not really the sign ordinance so it should have been moved, it should have been moved them. out and it wasn't well, I mean, they put it in until we get the neon stuff in the sign ordinance, and we'll probably go back and okay. take it back out. Okay. So I'm sorry, Paul. So he's entitled to one. So he's entitled to one. And some. the rest of my point is that if he wants more than one, he can follow the... But he's entitled to one two-footer. Correct. Right. And well, whatever is allowed today. Yeah, but right now it's two square feet. Okay. And, I, and all I'm saying is I, I would say go to four square feet. And if he chooses to put it in two signs, that's his choice. Right. Uh, I'm saying I don't think we, I don't think it was our intent. Let me say it differently. I think when the mayor and council accommodated an open or a neon sign, it was with the intent to do, to make a minimal change to what we were experiencing as a city. I understand. And, and in doing that, they've accommodated those people who were primarily interested in open or closed. And I don't think the intention was to have it be a lot of other stuff. So I'm I'm personally okay with the way the current ordinance allows. But that if if the intent was to get to open or close, making it two square feet, I mean he could put a Vienna sausage sign up and yes, not an open sign. Because you can't regulate content. Right. So mm-hmm. he, he can have a Vienna my, sausage. My issue is more the relative inconsistency between what's out there now and what we're talking about for these guys who need it more than the ones that already have it. I don't think that's being business friendly. I think being business friendly is to let them have more square footage, again, only during operation. And if they choose to make one big sign or two little ones, that's their call. Yeah. Okay. That, that's all. All right. What was I, that? I, and your subcommittee recommended this verbiage? Well, we recommended Present. something that it, we recommended to be consistent with what the mayor and council had previously adopted. And it, okay. And can you... Can you remind me who was on that group? Same the group that's there now. Pardon? Same group that's there Mayor now. and Council is the same group. No, no, no. The no. Uh, subcommittee. Oh. oh. Well, subcommittees has been a, <coughs> a moving, yeah. you know, it's been a moving target because we've had as many as six or seven people when you count the real estate people who came when it was appropriate. Okay, for but, on, but on this thing, we, had, we did have Highway 9 represented. What kind of diversity you had represented? We had a single person from Highway 9. 
It was um, and other Brenda other Hempel from the Katie's Car Wash, who represented Highway Nine. And hers would be a good example of being open. In other right. words, you know, right. it's kind of misting today. Is she going to wash cars or not? Right. Go home. <laughs> Sorry, I'd be, I'd be inclined to to uh, to stick with what the current council uh, and the subcommittee want. And if they or want to, it, if they want to be more business friendly, let them be more business friendly. But I I'd, I'd like to stay with what we proposed. Well, we don't have any voting tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So continue on. Just, this would is, you say this is going to be on the agenda right. uh, for the twenty fifth? Would you would, would that go forward with with uh, some Burbage with a, a possible discussion item? They won't go through it in this level of detail. Like they they, they oh, can. I think they will. Is that right? Oh, yeah, they, Good Lord. Yeah, they will. Okay. Oh, I, um, I can assure you. Well, I mean, they're going to go through. From, it. They're not going to just. You know, say, okay, okay. Let's approve it. <laughs> but I mean, you, you, I, it wouldn't bother me if yeah. it was put on the table that there were several members of the planning commission that thought a max of four feet split into you make that comment. between yeah. one or two signs, and some felt that yeah. one two had uh, two square feet was adequate mm -hmm. and uh, put it on the table. And I would add that another active member of this, especially in the last uh, two meetings, would was and just for discussion tonight, not for the yeah. you know it's going to mayor and council was was Ron Wallace, and Ron felt this was appropriate. So well, if you, I think if the subcommittee is defined as a diverse group, mm -hmm. then that that's the point. And if I'm not sure what Ron specifically would. Uh, you know, would bring to that beyond diversity, but anyway. Yeah, no, I was just another yeah. another credible business Absolutely. owner, small business owner in the area who is sensitive to the business issues that yeah. large and small businesses who can't have, who can't have any on sign. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. And right. therefore has the best interest of making sure that whatever's over here is as small as it can possibly be. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, that's no. a good point. Okay. He didn't not, say not, no that, not that he would do that. <laughs> he I didn't say no yet. I, yeah. he was, he's a credible business person who I'd, I. Well, Highway we'll, Nine's a different we'll market, a, and we'll get a chance to to vote on it on Tuesday, two weeks Tuesday. Okay. We will. We yeah. will. Yeah. yeah. It'll be on the docket. The the only thing I would say again, looking ahead, is that we've got to. I think we've got to describe what's allowed the same way in all three, or not allowed in all three. The other two just limit it to neon. Uh, yeah, I can clean that up. I can clean up the definition. Yeah, so, yeah, um, it, it, it needs to be, it needs to capture all of the in, intended. Uh, the, yeah. yeah. Yes, it does leave leaf holes. Yeah, yeah. there too. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. we're ready to go on. Yeah, keep, keep in mind we do get a chance to vote on this next at the planning commission meeting, so we will get another bite at it. If we can get through it tonight, it would be good. So. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to page 33, which is over in Starbuckle, starting now. Um, so let's talk about um, this is referring to non-residential single tenant building. <laughs> um, and uh, under other signage, one, permanent and temporary signs and windows shall not exceed 5, 5 to 8, 30% of each window and shall not block visibility from outside of the door. The area of the doors and spandrel glass panels are excluded from the calculation of the applicable sign area. Neon window signs are prohibited. So we're going to make it 20. 20. Are we 20? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And we're going to change neon, neon window signs to the whole shebang. Whole yeah. well, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do the definition of neon and just refer to it as neon. Okay. There. Okay, um, Kathy just pointed out that up right above B is 6. Um, a business may have an additional sign perpendicular to the wall with a maximum sign area size of 4 square feet. This was what we would call the blade sign or mm -hmm. 
perpendicular sign, so I believe the committee felt like an additional square footage would be appropriate. Yeah, the, the, the bottom line was, at the end of the day, when we were talking about what, what accommodation can we give to the businesses to be more business friendly, we, we talked about um, the window signage to be in, to move, you know, in some cases be moved from zero to now 20%. We had offered 30, 20 is fine. Um, we were offering a larger blade sign, and they still get their freestanding, was it two by two? What's, or the, you know, the temporary, temporary information sign. So that's three things that they've got as vehicles to communicate their business message. Along with their normal wall signs. Right. So that's really four. Oh, where was five? Wasn't there? Didn't we get? Oh, they can have a banner. Yeah, so they can have. Sign, you've got the wall sign. You've got the sandwich shingle sign. sign, the sandwich board sign, the information sign, the banner, and then we'll work on the display. And why do they have a temporary sign? Temporary the, information sign. Because they're, they're, everybody's entitled to that. You know, the two by two, so you can say I'm hiring, it can say festival, it can say. And that's in addition to the window sign. Yes. Yeah, it's just like I can have it in my front yard, they can have it in front of their business. It's mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Good. And then uh, under B2, the business may have one sandwich board sign, so it shall be single or double face, metal or wood frame, no plastic, chalkboard type. Um, I think Kathy had suggested when we talked about um, doing black or green so they don't come in with some weird colors. Adding that you're talking about? Yeah. Right, I'd be okay with that. Okay. And then located directly in front of the premises but cannot impede pedestrian or vehicular traffic. And Kathy gave some good advice about it to be um, ADA compliant, which is you said two feet. Correct. 36 inches from the building. From the building. Um, or, or, however you want it, whether it's in the curb or from the building. Yeah, you're going to have 36 inches on your curb. And you can be, you know, either, either side of the side. 36 inch, like, passage area? That way it's less subjective. Okay. So do we want to make a, a maximum or minimum? Minimum. 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 So it has to be at least 36 inches from the building. Up. Yeah. Okay. It cannot be placed in tree island or landscape strip. Maximum height of four feet, six square feet per side. Can we can we look at each one of these and sure. kind of talk about some examples? Located yeah. directly in front of the premises. If if I think about the uh, twisted thread, and I'm guessing that where she would put it, Joe, you probably know, but I'm guessing where she would put a sandwich board would be on what I would call the right side if you're facing the building from the corner up a road. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably on the corner. That to me is not the front of the premises. So do we really mean in the front of the premises? Mm -hmm. So we she did. can't have a sandwich board where she wants it. We can't. You know, we were not writing this to accommodate a specific business. We were writing no, no, it but to I'm, but I'm, be applicable isn't the front of the the Shouldn't the front of the premises be defined as where the entrance to the business is? That's what we were thinking. But in this case, that's not the front of the building. Road frontage versus logical frontage of. Uh, I mean, the, the it's like the old blind dogs. And, uh, you know, the front of the old blind dog faces Crabapple Road, but the entrance is on the side. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would argue the entrance. I mean, you do have a door on the other side, but nobody uses that door. Right. It's the same for all of us buildings. Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. dentist and scoops and... Mm -hmm. I, I'm just... I don't really think that that's what we mean. I, I mean, in front of the entrance to the business is... I would think is more in keeping with what we're intending. I don't know. Well, so if you... Both. So... Could be either or, George. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if the doorway, if the primary doorway is in the courtyard area, and you want to, we're suggesting that the 
front of the building is on the road, but right. the primary entrance is in the courtyard. Right. The intention was to allow them to put it in to where it's be visible in front of the business. Right. But that's not where she puts it, is what I'm hearing. She puts it in the courtyard. Well, I mean... And this would say she can't. That, that's right. all I'm saying. I mean... She, she does? Do we care if it goes in the courtyard as long well, as it's she's not got interfering with pedestrian or... Joe, courtyard. she puts it in the courtyard? Not the courtyard. She puts it on the side of the building because that's where the main entrance to her store is. That's where she puts her mannequin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mannequin, right. sorry. The mannequin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Course, mannequin. Gotcha. Okay. Well, mannequin's yep. different. Yeah. Well, I, I know. But, but I mean, same, but same do, and that's Well, it is and it isn't. And well, but it it's wasn't the same the premise in terms of location. I know it's not the same thing yeah. as a sandwich board. I'm right. Because we, yeah. we do address displays you know, right, separately. It doesn't matter where it is around the building, whether it's the front side or rear. I, I don't. I personally wouldn't care as long as it doesn't interfere so with pedestrian or vehicular traffic. There's only one of them. Do we care where it is, whether it's the side, front, or rear? No. I have to no. think about what, what we talked about. I mean, um, directly in front of the premises was the was supposed to mean up against the building as opposed to in the middle of the parking lot. Right. You know, and then it has to stay out of the triolas and landscape strips. So but then, if, like Kathy said, if you, put a, if you put a maximum forward. distance from the building, that takes care of that, right? That, that's an option. But I mean, it could, I would assume they would put it in front of their door, but I mean, it could go on any side. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem if they want to put it on one side or the other as mm -hmm. long as it's compliant with the rest of this stuff. So say within some distance from the building and not impeding in pedestrian. Well at one point we talked about with within a certain number of feet of the door and but but that's not. It doesn't really matter because like what if you wanted it out like with the you know with that building you don't use the front doors but maybe they want a mm -hmm. sandwich sign kind of in front so the people driving by would see. Right. It. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That was the spirit of right. our conversation, which was to allow them a sandwich right. board to communicate an additional business message. To, uh, but to use it to and also guys. not to impede, you know, pedestrian traffic or not to be in the right of way or the. So you want to make like a maximum distance away. And I think you should because of what. Allowing for ADA. Well, as long, yeah, as long as it's not. As long as it's in front of their business, whether, you know, most businesses, well, I can't say that. As long as it's in front of their business. And if they have happen to have a two or three or four sided business, no problem putting it on any one of those four sides. What if, what if you were to say adjacent to the business premise? Or within X feet or something. As long as it means their business. Yeah. I mean, this goes back to the content-neutral. I mean, technically, they could... It's, I know, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate, but okay. reality is who's saying that you have to be in front of that business? What if there that was the whole point. Is it need to be in front of their business? areas. Mm -mm. Can't do it. Mm -mm. That was... I mean, the intention was for it to be their a sandwich business. board for their business. Okay. Well, but it, but it doesn't preclude... Ron putting a sandwich board in front of the old blind dog for the twisted thread. I'm mean, no. not sure why he would do that. Yeah, but he, he could. We, <laughs> we don't regulate content. Right. So well, if he I'm wants to same advertise same twisted thread in front of his business, right. he's or entitled to do so. that, right? I'm saying the same thing, but in reverse. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can't regulate content. Right. So but I. You, but you can not regulate one business putting it in front right. of somebody else's business. You can. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's the intent, is that each business is allowed up to one sandwich board for their for business. Their business. Yeah, right. What they put on it is their business. Is their business. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, to, <laughs> regardless of the content. Yes. <laughs> but, George, to your point, I think it should be at a max distance because I could see somebody putting one out in the, in the middle of a parking lot. Oh, we, I, have a, like, I have a picture of it on my yeah, phone. Yeah. yeah. So, a so picture of one it, where they put it in the parking lot. Yeah. So and I think it, it was should, nowhere near their front door. Right. It should be within X number of feet of the premises. What's X? I, I don't know. Ten feet. But but also as it's written to not be in islands to right, be right, ADA right. compliant right. to be whatever.
Okay. So it should say. Um, you get three foot out from that. The ten feet. Six away, but no more than ten feet. Right. Ten feet. But we get rid of directly in front of the premises. Mm -hmm. like lo located adjacent to the business. No, that that sounds like it's going somewhere else. Just say directly in front of the business. No, what Angela said is right. Just located within, you know, not less than 36, no more than 10, not less than 3 feet or more than 10 feet. The other one here, and maybe I'm being too literal, but when we say chalkboard type, that to me says that it's going to be a slate that somebody's going to hand write on. Mm -hmm. This says it shall be that. Is that really what we mean, or it can be that? Shall be. So if I get a painted, you know, fancy design sandwich board, I can't use that. Why would you exclude that? Why would I exclude that? Paint it. What do you mean by paint it? Let's say I have a sign maker make me a sandwich board that's a permanent sandwich board. Well the, well, the point of the sandwich board is it's supposed to be changeable. Message. Why? Right. Message I mean, to content. That, that may not be no. the point of every person that wants a sandwich board, well, though. Yeah, well, they can they can do it. They can keep the same one up there for six months. But only if but only if they handwrite it in chalk. <laughs> no, that's too too restrictive. I mean, you go to a chalkboard and it it rains in Atlanta for twenty four days. Well, I think the other point was you need to bring it in every night. Well, yeah, most of them. Okay. It still rains in the daytime. So you got rain coming down on a chalkboard. No, it's way too restrictive. We're going to have a sandwich board. I probably wouldn't have one that was chalk. Because first thing is, board? the kids uh -huh. come along and smear uh -huh. it. And I actually don't think even really use chalk anymore. They have like these liquid chalk. Yeah, it's like, like a dry erase pen. Yeah. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to have a chalkboard. <laughs> well, we're trying to forget, you know, you can these plastic signs. Plastic. plastic. The white plastic. Sandwich board signs interchangeable. But it says no, it says it says no plastic. No, it, says plastic. No, it says no plastic. Oh, well, I think, I think we're looking for something oh, more with more detail. So. Chalkboard as opposed to the dry erase. Yeah. Well, that's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nope. I'm not going to put up a sandwich board on here. <laughs> but I might, and I don't. I mean, if I got this nice promotional sign from, from Guinness. Well, see, yeah, it, it, they were was, was trying to avoid that. <laughs> oh, no. We don't want the clip on. Just it, yes. Yeah. Kind of. No, it's not enough, enough, enough poster. Cut, if you, if you, make, <laughs> you allow it, but you allow something nobody wants, so you were basically saying you can't have it. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we're thinking menus or sale of the day. Or, something. Well, what do you do if it rains? Well, you you you're, you're, you're not practical. You this you is not practical. This is not friendly. People aren't going to be pausing outside in the rain to read your sign anyway. No. Well, a lot of people. If you got specials. Stuff, they're, they're not built. <laughs> but I got. So remember, we were, at no, we were at no signs before. So we thought that moving to a, a sandwich board that was more quaint in appearance, that had something that was consistent with the look and feel of crab apple and Birmingham. That, that would be a, a reasonable and think, accommodation. And there, you're probably right. There's probably some nice sandwich boards that aren't plastic and they're not chalkboards, but then that becomes so, we can't yeah. really make that judgment. So, oh, I like yours, but I don't like yours. So. Yeah, or the intention was to create a reasonable standard ah, okay. that would accommodate uh, additional way to communicate a business message okay. that it was not inconsistent with keeping with the heritage of those areas yeah, but, uh, and it's a step in the right direction to provide more signage. I'm all for excluding the plastic yeah. but this is saying it shall be chalkboard. It doesn't allow for anything else other than chalkboard. That's and what I can, can I, do uh, is put a chalkboard out there and attach a, a permanent wood sign to it. Yeah. Well we don't we don't say you can't do that. <laughs> and then I'm playing devil's advocate. Yeah. Okay. Are we okay with the rest of the... What are we, we doing on this? I think you want to change your dimensions here because you've got... Um, oh, that's right. 
four feet, six square feet, but most sandwich boards are two feet wide, so it's two by four, it's eight square feet. Well, I think, Angel, didn't well, you double check? The panel is six square feet, but then you may have a foot or two or whatever leg-wise. Oh, okay. So the yeah. total, all right, so you need to sort of... The total height is four feet, but the panel... So you'll say the, the maximum height of the panel... Six square feet per panel. Per panel side. Yeah. So you can have some for the frame. Mm -hmm. And this right here. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? What, why do we feel like sandwich boards are okay in Crabapple and Birmingham, but not on Highway 9? I was thinking about that. Well, you know, if I might add, because I went through this with Camp Street, I mean, more, more than I ever wanted to. But the issue is that it's a pedestrian oriented sign. That's how you think of a sandwich board. When you're on Route 9, it's an automobile oriented sign. So totally different type yeah. of sign, size of sign, very different. So I guess that's a concern. I, I, I would agree with you, except if I think about Sembler, that's not a automobile type place. I mean, once you're in there, you're in there, and a lot of the traffic in Sembler is foot traffic. But store to store. But it's right. simply, it is more intense than Birmingham and Crab Apple. Oh, yeah. It's vehicularly more yeah. intense. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, no no question about that. But I don't, I don't think the vehicular traffic within there would preclude people being able to read sandwich I, I'm not saying anybody would do it. Again, it's just... Right. Well, they might, they might do it on, like, um, Katie's car, was. she might have one out there if she had a spice hole of the day. Uh, well, now you're back to Kathy. I mean, if you got a sign that small out there for a sandwich board in Katie's car, wash, nobody's ever going to see it. Because you, you're going by there too, too fast. fast. Okay. Okay. It's just a repeat of the same discussion. Isn't it? Limited sign types, lollipop signs, mindless signs. Oh, I guess we, we um, got rid of the temporary window signs, signs placed in the interior window. So basically, we're just trying to make everything consistent. And then um, got rid of the sandwich elimination. So. Can I ask where we define lollipop signs? <laughs> <laughs> We probably don't. I'm not trying to be smart. I don't no, know what lollipop is. You don't? Yeah. It's you don't know. ever see a lollipop? Uh, no. I might we'll have to add a definition. Okay. Lollipop came from actually uh, the uh, weights when you got weighed. They were called lollipop scales. It was a big round scale. And then oh, the yeah, post right. going down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that was what they call a lollipop sign. Same, same. Uh, I would say. Um, do people you, still use? <laughs> no. Well, that was the term they do, but it was used like in bus stations too, and that type of thing. Okay. So we can but, add a lollipop definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find okay. a better definition than threads. <laughs> okay, we're going on to Birmingham. But we're on that. Oh, sorry. Can I ask something about uh, the uh, window signs? Uh, sure. Birmingham, I mean, uh, Crab Apple. I don't think we addressed uh, the second floor sign uh, windows. Is that something that needs to be? Addressed? I think it applies to all windows, mm -hmm. no matter whether it's first or second floor. I just want to make sure because I have seen other windows well, where they do different, different second, too. second floor windows, if it's a, if it's a business location, that's one thing. A second floor window, if it's an architectural feature, is something different, in my mind. We, we talked about the architectural feature component of that. We did not talk about a second floor business. Well, if it's a business on the second floor, they deserve like a sign. Yes, they should. Mm -hmm. But in that case, it's not an architectural feature to the building. Okay. Like, you know, in um, at Birmingham, the, the yellow building in the back on Curtis's corner has the appearance of being a two-story building. It has windows in the second floor. They're nothing more than an architectural feature giving the impression of a second floor. My darn that, would, that should not be considered into signage space. 
nor do I think they would. Right, it's not likely. No. But if you don't, but, but you don't differentiate. Oh, no, no, I totally agree. But I think the idea of the second floor, they would be if it's a mm -hmm. business entitled to its windows. Okay, can we examine this D a little bit more carefully before we move on? Um, well, are we finished with the other part of the discussion? I thought we were still talking about D. I was trying to go on, but. And then it came up with the issue with the window signs. So mm -hmm. let's, not, let's not lose either one of those. Where, go, where do you want to go first? I, I'm sorry. I didn't know where Mark was. Go, go ahead. Well, he was just making a comment in general. It yeah. wasn't that he was somewhere specific. He was just saying that it was a So we don't, we don't address that. I think we're not, we haven't addressed that in the ordinance. <clears throat> we talked about it the importance of an interpretation of an architectural feature versus a non-architectural feature, but um, where would we put that? What if you define window signs as only applying to functional windows or... Well, it doesn't... Well, not or, pardon? Operational. I don't mean operational, I mean functional. Windows are to see in and out. If it's an architectural feature on the second floor and there's nothing up there, then it's not to see in and out. Or maybe you say in the description of the window space, you say not to include those considered architectural features. Yeah. Can we do it that way? Sure. Say that again, I'm sorry. Just in the description of window signage, you say not to include windows that would be considered an architectural feature to the building? Well, if it's the second sentence, you can just add it there. It says, the area of the doors and stands of glass. And, and where, where are you, Kathy? Where are you reading? Page 27. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where you want to go. Okay. Where are you reading? Page 27. Because it doesn't preclude them from putting a sign up there. They just don't get any extra allowance for the space. Say it to me again. It doesn't preclude them from putting a sign up there. They just don't get any extra allowance for the amount of that space. If they well, the intention is to not allow them to put a sign up there. If it's well, intended to be it, an yeah, if it's intended to, intended to be an architectural feature, it shouldn't be an area where they mm -hmm. can put any signage. Yeah. Well, I thought we said it was excluded. Well, that's talking about how to uh, that, calculate the area. Yeah, where you were talking about putting it was just a, a calculation. I think you got to go back to the definition of window signage all the way back in the beginning. Which, yeah, I don't know that we actually have window signs defined. Yeah, you do. Window no. signs, any sign affects the exterior of the window or window panes. Or the where are you, George? What page? Four. Page four. It says window signs include decals and images painted on glass, and you just say window signs are not allowed, or you know, window signs 